also, I, I want to point out, though, that that kind of thing, because they over and over again in this movie, they'll start trying to convince Eli that his house is haunted. They're right. They'll be like, oh, things move that I could have sworn I put in the other place. My dog will bark at nothing. My cat will stare at something that isn't there. The house must be haunted because this movie is literally trying to convince Eli that his house is haunted. It's going to try to sell haunted house ghost removal services at the end. Right. That's right. The fact that this movie doesn't end with a coupon code is the only <laughs> saving grace that it has. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, or they won't give us our supper. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath is still on vacation, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Spooktacular. Spooktacular. Yeah. Spooktacular. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with this one so far. We're also excited to welcome back returning guest masochists. It's so rare. It's so rare that we get anyone to come back. Mary and Shelly, because if we're going to do a spooktacular, you got to bring your friends Mary and Shelly. got to bring Mary and Shelly. Right, exactly. exactly. Duh. You know, it, it wasn't until like... He's going to introduce us, Shelly. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. By all means, go She's ahead. I, right I already, already had shit to say. Interrupting. Okay, I'm going to interrupt and just say... Why it, don't... Why don't we let him say the name of our podcast? <laughs> Go ahead, I'll Anna. get it in. I'll get it in. I promise. <laughs> Go well, then it. I just wanted to say that it took me like four minutes to realize that this movie that we're watching is like, oh, yeah, it's Halloween month. Okay. Right. This is supposed to be spooky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Yeah, for that. well, the movie forgets it for very long periods of time. But yes, of course, Mary and Shelley are joining us all the way from the Latter Day Lesbian podcast. Mary Shelley, welcome back. So excited to have you back on. Oh, we're so excited to be here. Oh, no, we've Thank missed you. you. We've, but we haven't missed watching shitty movies, but we've missed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Shelly. God awful movies. Oh, sorry. God awful. That's right. There yes. you go. Gotcha. Got to get a plug in for the show. <laughs> yeah. You thought the rom-com we made you watch was scary. Yeah. Okay. So tell us, Mary, what will we be breaking down today? Oh, I'm, I'm wishing we could break down the entire thing, like make it like dissolve or blow up into a thousand pieces. <laughs> Break it down chemically. You mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, chemically. Mm -hmm. In a bathtub. Oh, like a dead body. <laughs> like a body. I like it. Uh-huh. Gosh, I don't Where do you start? I took a lot of notes, though. You did. I really did. I just ended up watching in horror. Like, mm -hmm. I just had to sit mm -hmm. there and I just kind of... Well, that's appropriate. It's true. I pushed my notes away and I'm like, Mary's got this. I'm just in it for the experience. <laughs> you know something that really stuck out to me, maybe because I'm in uh, TV production, is... Oh, the bad camera angles, the weird dolly moves, the lingering on, I don't even know, like Carpet. a porch light. <laughs> yes. And during yeah. the right. opening credits. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, There's no, so no. many weird, like just weird production things in this one I noticed. Right. So this week we're watching Unwanted Presence which is the story of somebody going, hey, um, shit, we were supposed to be doing a horror movie for like 45 minutes and then finally getting around <laughs> to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yep. They buried the lead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the thrills and chills of haunted house movies where the answer is always just, just don't go in that house anymore. Uh -huh. But you wished they ended with a literal altar call for your protagonist. <laughs> you will love this movie. That was an um, um, amazing description. Yeah, of that I think bullshit. we're done here. Yeah. yeah, wrap yeah. It up. <laughs> I messaged Noah last night because I saw he was starting to watch the movie while I was working on the sketches and the ads and stuff. And I was like, hey, man, like, I know. It's just like bad good for the first hour. But I promise you, the last 15 minutes of this movie <laughs> are going to make it all worthwhile. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> all right. So this is, of course, the part of the intro where we do our best worsts. We nominate the sh movie for being the best at being the worst at something. Mm -hmm. So now, Mary, we, we, we may have already got yours with the with the weird lingering. Hey, look at this finial, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> I also want to nominate it for the least attractive ghost. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. Wasn't clear what they were going for. They were going somewhere between like horror makeup and the first half of a makeover show before they like get someone all dolled up in their new <laughs> <Yeah>. outfit. <laughs> yeah. It was whenever 
she would show up on screen, I kind of wanted them to make it a little more clear because I wanted to see specific details of what she looked like. But this is kind of fuzzy, bad camera. So it was sort of like a zombie ghost ish mm-hmm. dinosaur sort of crypt keeper. <laughs> it was a it was a lot. <laughs> it's like there were two makeup artists fighting over the idea, right? Like one <laughs> was going zombie, the other was going ghost. Well, so I was gonna go with a similar thing. For, my, mine was best worst lingering ghost shots. There you go. Because here's the thing. Like the one thing that the last like 30 years or whatever has added to horror movies that wasn't already there is that like Insta cut, like where they realize that if you see something short enough, it doesn't matter what it is. It's scary. Right. Mm-hmm. If you see something for just long enough to, for like face to register and, and, and nothing else, and then you cut away, that's really terrifying. This movie keeps doing that, but it keeps lingering. <laughs> right. So you'll have that initial, oh, that's scary. And then you'll just sit there and look at their bad makeup for a minute and go, well, actually, not scary. It's just, it's kind of silly looking. <laughs> are they going for zombie or are they going for fucking ghost? Yeah. It's scary for like one tenth of a second. And then you just kind of start like picking it apart, like if you're super stoned and you can't stop thinking about something, like you're just looking at it and you're pulling it apart because they give you, you know, minutes to look at the ghost face. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It was as though they were going for shortcuts, but like, didn't have a fast enough camera guy. Like he was just trying to like swing the camera away real fast. They were like, Arch, you're going to hurt your back. We'll just... We'll just take everything that's supposed to be a momentary glance and spend like a minute and a half on it. Don't worry about it, man. It's fine. Oh, it's somebody's grandpa that needed a side hustle. That's that's what we're going on. Yeah, that's it. Exactly, yeah. Eli, did you have any best worsts for us? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go with best worst flirting. Mm. It is literally a single line in the film, (laughs) and it will haunt me for the rest of my life. No spoilers. We'll get to it when we get to it, but it's the greatest thing that's ever been in any of our movies. So just be prepared for that. I have a best worst. I got totally skipped over. Yeah, yeah. No, Shelly, by by all means. So I have like a best best. And the best best, I want that secretary that does every fucking thing (laughs) under the sun (laughs) to (laughs) live with me and run my life. I actually had Mary, Mary and I both started just writing down everything she did. And I'm like, this main character doesn't have to do jack shit. She just tells her secretary. It Mm -hmm. was amazing. I want her in my life. Yeah. My worst is the worst double for the Rascal Flats lead singer. At the very end. <laughs> oh, sure. The yeah. exorcist yep, yep. guy. Yep, there you yep. go. <laughs> All right. Was that so now we've given you a ton of shit <laughs> to look forward to. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This movie's in no hurry to get going, so we're going to follow its lead with a quick break. But we'll be back in a minute with all the mundane hauntings that are unwanted presents. Mary, will you get that? I think it's more trick-or-treaters. Oh, sure. Trick-or-treat. Eli, Noah, what what are you doing? Uh, you got rich neighbors. We've hit like two full size candy bar houses. Yeah, no, and plus we're hoping maybe you could give us twenty to forty percent off of premium electronics, please. Twenty to forty percent off electronics. What are we, Raycon? Wait, you mean Raycon, the makers of everyday earbud, known for delivering high quality audio and thoughtful features like a thirty two hour battery life and a perfect in ear fit for all day wear and lasting comfort. All this at half the price of other premium brands? That Raycon? That's the one. To thank everyone who's shown them support the past six years, Raycon is offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 40%. Wow. I love the Raycon Everyday Earbuds they sent us, and I can't wait to check out the Everyday Headphones at just 99 bucks. That's why I, No Illusions, personally endorse this product. Celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on now. Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash gam and use the code BIRTHDAY to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. That's code BIRTHDAY at buyraycon.com slash gam to score 20 to 40% off. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, now, Make with a candy. Guys, it's not even close to Halloween. We have a gun. Uh, That's a shift in tone. We really like candy. Lots. All right, everyone. I call to order this meeting of Petty Ghosts Anonymous. So why don't we go around and introduce ourselves, talk about, you know, sort of where we are this week. I'll start. I'm Mar, the ghost cat from The Grudge. And I, I know that I didn't really need to become a ghost over the whole situation. Kind of, you know, not my circus, not my monkeys. And I'm aware of that now. Well, hi, I'm La Llorona. 
I saw my husband talking to another woman and I drowned our kids, which I've done a lot of good work to realize was the problem with that situation. And uh, well, yeah, well, that's, you know, that's me. That's, you know, that's great stuff. So much progress. Hi, I'm Mrs. Ganoush. Not technically a ghost, but you know, I'm doing the work. You sure are. You sure are. Anyway, I cursed someone to hell for denying me a mortgage, which again, I now realize is a much more involved project. And yeah, that's on me. My bad. Yeah, no, you should have cursed the 2007 housing market. Am I right? If only. Hey, sorry. Is this the right meeting? I don't think so. You, you seem alive. Yeah, but um, I'm really disappointed in the season of Buffy where she and Spike became a love interest. Who do no, I? That's, uh, that's TV nerds. You need to go. It's like it's two doors down on the left. Oh, right. Sorry. Some people, man. Totally. And we're back for the breakdown and we're going to start off on a house, uh, but not not a creepy house. It's just like a regular house being shot as though it was creepy. Yeah, they were like sepia tone is creepy. Nope. Old timey shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think like a suburban cul-de-sac area is creepy in a sort of affluent area. I mean, <laughs> it is like it is. But yeah, not in the right way. <laughs> Redlining. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Exactly. Did it say where this was supposed to take place? Because I thought I saw Spanish moss hanging from trees. Did you all notice oh, that? Yeah. I, 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 I don't think they ever actually specify where. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't think they ever specify any single thing in this yeah, movie. I, I say it later in my notes. I think they thought they didn't have the right to nouns for this movie. So <laughs> right. the vagaries they employ are impressive. <laughs> it really is. And of course, we get the all but inevitable based on a true story tag. Fuck you, yeah, right. dude. Right? I, I know from my limited experience in film work that you can it can be based on a true story just by having maybe like mm -hmm. the same name of a dog that really exists. <laughs> yeah, that's all I you can't mean. see how any anything <laughs> else is based on anything true in here. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, there was a lady who moved into a house once. That is literally that, how yep. true the story was. Yeah, <laughs> yep, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's about it. So we cut inside the house and we see this woman. She's writing in her diary and she goes to put away the diary and we see that she has a gun. But it's like, it's like a Luger from I World know. War One. It's like an old ass Hungarian <laughs> pistol. It's like the guns you buy in Colonial Williamsburg. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, right. I, that was the she like, loaded the powder earlier. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Tamp <laughs> down the the ball. Yeah, <laughs> the musket. I know because I said to Shelly, Shelly's like, oh, she has a gun on the bed. I'm like. What? That's not a gun. What is that? <laughs> it doesn't look like an actual for real gun that know. you would know. It's, yeah, it's an Potato old ass Potato gun. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. I want to know how they picked that. Like, who happened to have one in the back of their car because they right. were about to go hunting? They're like, I've got a prop. Yeah. What the hell? Weird ass Nazi. I have a duel with Alexander Hamilton later <laughs> in the week. If you guys want to use my gun, <laughs> nice. we can do that. And I should point out that this is the like, pre-suicide ghost movie montage, right? Mm -hmm. So we're about to get like all the things wrong with her life. But these are Christians. So instead of writing the already incredibly thin requirements for a ghost movie, this is just a lady who's had a very unfortunate series of things happen to her. Yeah. Right. To a hilarious degree. It just keeps going and going. Right. Because like we flash back to her daughters who I guess died in an accident or whatever. I'm like, oh, OK. But then it's like her husband divorced her and then she got a like terminal disease from her doctor. And I'm just like, keep going. Right. Make this make the rest of the movie 90 fucking minutes of more bad things. And then she stepped in a puddle and it was all the way up to her ankle. So I got down <laughs> in her so shoe. Funny. Jeez. So, that okay. The little girls that you were talking about, I thought they were just laughing at her. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. I wasn't sure what was that. Like, they were mocking her. Yeah, I'm like, oh shit, she's getting bullied. Then she's going to step in a puddle. It's fucking these over, elementary people. school girls <laughs> are bullying her. <laughs> could have been yeah, that. Yeah, I guess we didn't also get that. Could have been that. But yeah, but ultimately this ends with her shooting herself with a fucking 
Bavarian pistol from 1910 or so. How do you get ammo for that, by the way? Like, <laughs> right, you can't just right. go to Walmart and get some Amazon's? 22. Okay. Timu. Gotta go to Timu. a fucking Timu. museum <laughs> from <laughs> John Wick's guy or something. Yeah. I loved the super realistic blood splat on the wall. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> We're going to oh, talk yeah. about that as it comes. Like, seriously, I, I, I watch way too many crime documentaries and shit, and I'm watching that blood splatter and how there's no blood on the blanket. I'm like, no, this is mm-hmm. so fucked up, guys. This oh, Shelly's so an up. expert now. Yeah. yeah Forensics. Yeah. Oh, one of the major themes of this movie is that whichever lady they borrowed this house from was like, you cannot do a fucking thing to my house. Do you understand? (laughs) I will pull your eyes out of your skull and jump rope with them. So everything scary movie that's supposed to happen is so carefully done around the credenza. It's fucking amazing. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, so we get that shot. Then we get the title, right? Unwanted Presence. And in one of the most jarring cuts we ever see, uh, we've ever been subjected to, we're suddenly at a television news studio with upbeat television news studio music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, the producer who we will never see again is worried about the lady who shot herself. Apparently, she's the, the news anchor. She hasn't shown up for work. So he tells her friend who we will never see again Mm-mm. to go check <laughs> on her while a lady in a yellow shirt has a big like, put me in coach. I can read. The-. I'm sorry, a lady <laughs> yeah. that we will never see again. See again. It's like, put me in coach. I can read the news this time, right? Imagine how bad at storytelling you have to be where you're like, all right, the newscaster just shot herself. How does someone find her? What's that you say? Anyone coming to the house? No, no, no. I'm going to need at least 11 minutes of explanation of why anyone would check on a human being who has shot themselves. And I'm going to like, I'm going to introduce four new characters and two cops. And it's yep. just insane. I know. I'm amazed we didn't see the producer being born and like going through producer school <laughs> and landing the big job. And then never see this person again. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. introduce people. Yeah. So the, the lady who was getting her big shot of being a news anchor, I thought this was now going to be like a, you know, up close and personal, one of those news anchor stories, but she just right. disappeared. And she sucked anyway. Let's just be honest. There are no good actors or actresses in this oh, movie. Oh, no. None. Zero. They're all <laughs> equally horrible. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I know, yeah. but I love that that, um, I don't know, producer, executive producer, whatever his role is, he's like ordering people around. He gets out his fat stogie. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <a> fucker. <laughs> He's like, just say, I, I want to look like that guy from uh, from fucking Spider Man. What's his name? I want to look like that. Right. Yeah, man. Right, give me yeah. Spider Man cigar. That yeah. was it. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. That's Hilarious. his motivation. Gotcha. So the studio assist, the friend the, the, that he sends, she goes to the house to check on Laura. Laura is the, the lady that committed suicide. Mm hmm. And she like, she gets out of her car. She's screaming and crying. And I'm like, okay, like, we know Laura killed herself, right? But. But for all they know, she like set her alarm to PM instead of AM at this point. Like her reaction is fucking hilarious given what she knows at this point. Right. And my my question was, did the assistant lady drive the entire way in a screaming panic? Right. Was she like <laughs> in L.A. traffic being like, ah, 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 shit, the five is closed. God damn, I'm going to be behind this guy for a while. Ah, ah. <laughs> I know. You're right. She didn't even discover the body yet. But no, wait, no. wait, wait, wait. Let's give her a little bit of credit. She did say that she had a feeling that something wasn't right. You're uh, right. So she let, did. You know, yeah. Come yeah. on now. She, The spirit very well could have told her that there was her friend with the bloody wall, no blood on the bed, and a luger with make-believe <laughs> ammo. We don't know. We don't know what the spirit said. Right. No, you're right. You're right. The mm-hmm. Holy Spirit could have told her anything by now. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is also where we meet Creepy Neighbor, who is the greatest character in this oh, movie. The greatest, greatest character. My favorite. <laughs> in the history of god awful movies. Yeah. So she goes to the neighbor. The neighbor's just like right next to the driveway, like raking the same spot she will be raking for <laughs> yes. the entire film. <laughs> yes. And we noticed that too. We did. I'm like, like, you might want to wear gardening gloves because you're going to have some wicked blisters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. And by the way, the none of, none of the leaves never move. Like every time, I'm like, the leaves are still there. Right. It's on yes. the same fucking day. She hasn't done a thing. <laughs> yeah, I love that part. Well, so it, like I expected her to turn out to be the ghost, right? Because then it would all make sense why she's always in the same place and the oh. leaves never move or whatever. And I, oh. the movie's nowhere near that clever, apparently. No. But yeah, that been that's great. what I thought at, before I realized how bad this movie was. 
So the lady goes up and she's like, hey, have you seen this, that woman that lives there? And she's like, I heard a shot in the night. She's probably dead. <laughs> like all the others. Yes, like all the others. Yeah, I wrote my notes. Oh, Ma'am, God. I'm going to need you to do so much more than just wait in your yard to see if someone shows up when you hear a shot. <laughs> and then I wrote, side note, I also feel like this is exactly what Noah's neighbors would do if they heard a shot. Yeah. So this, this is all tracking for me. You're right. You're right. There's a thread throughout this entire movie of people not getting the authorities involved when they should. Yep. <laughs> Just yeah. Like it's it's amazing. Well, that's because this movie couldn't afford a fucking cop car, which we're going to learn in the next oh, scene. I <laughs> about that. Or uniforms. Right. Yes. <laughs> They're dressed like reservoir dogs. It's so oh, God. silly. Yes. My favorite thing about the cops is that they didn't have shoot or kick in the door money. Nope. So mm. they just look at the door, cut away, and then it's open now. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Maybe there wasn't any insurance to cover injuries there. They're just yeah. like, you know. We'll, we'll bang hard. Right. But, no, so, but if somebody throws out their back, we could get sued. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, maybe it's also back to the owner of the house going, okay, just don't touch my house. Just <laughs> make sure right. it's pristine. Don't kick the door in. <laughs> it's probably right. Don't leave blood on the wall except for this one little mm -hmm. designated Yeah, area. this one little mm -hmm. tiny part. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then and we have this like long scene of like, you know, them trying to figure out who to call and they did the, the family and the blah, blah, blah. None of this ever matters. We're never going to see this cop again. We're never going to see the friend again or, or whatever. So all of this scene is is completely unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And again, it's so brilliant because you know they were in the writer's room and they were like, you know whatever bothers me? And it's like, what bothers you? I hate when there's like a haunted house story and someone died in the house. And I'm like, well, what was the legal jurisprudence for the right. ownership of that house? I would like to see how it goes from <laughs> escrow to probate. Okay, And we finally show this in a movie. It goes on for so so long. We are going to meet the fucking lawyer that handles the fucking power of attorney shit for this woman. Again, we're never going to see this character again. He just shows Ever. up long enough to call a real estate agent and put her in charge of the house. We're going to spend like the next seven minutes with this character. Right. It's so fucking weird. I mean, is there no next of kin? It doesn't make any sense. Also, going back to these plainclothes cops, nobody asked to see credentials. These mm. dudes roll up in, you know, a Lincoln or whatever they're in and they're mm. wearing a suit, suits. It's like, how do you know who they are? Yeah. Well, they didn't really do much of anything anyway, except just kind of wander around. I was thinking too about how these people are just popping up in the movie and not really doing anything and they go nowhere. I'm betting you there was one particular Sabbath day in the congregation where they passed the plate around and they were like, whoever donates the most will get a part in this <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, that's it. They're trying to get all of the top Kickstarter donors or whatever. Yeah, for okay. sure. So we watch him do some fucking post-death lawyer stuff. And then we, we, he calls the real estate agent, right? Who will be at least something of a character for the first half of this movie. Right. She donated a significant amount. amount <laughs> right. Right. It's probably her yeah. house that we were using. Yeah, well, probably. Like <laughs> Seems like it. She was at least somewhat entertaining. She and the neighbor. Because it was so bad. Like, it, you know, <laughs> yeah. we didn't look forward to seeing her except to know she was going to say some weird shit. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Our standards got lower and lower as the movie went on. <laughs> True. So, OK. So now we're going to get the scene where the lawyer, Preston, is with Rachel, the real estate agent, looking at the house. Mm hmm. Yeah. And the vibes are way, way too cheery. Again, like this is scenes you're not supposed to see in a horror movie. So it's like, Preston, how are the kids? Well, you know, Greg is head and like I'm like four screen minutes ago, a woman shot herself in the fucking head. Can we pick a tone <laughs> for this goddamn movie? <laughs> God, that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> Now, are we at the part yet where the ghost does some shenanigans? Yes. Not yet. Not yet. It's um, real close. Yes. This is the, no, the, the ghost looks out the window here. Yep. Yeah. This is the first of the, well, that's supposed to be a half second shot, but they show her for like four and a half seconds and you're just like, right. oh, that's just some poor girl that they've made wear too much makeup. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. But then um, like the real estate agents are freaked out by the ghost and then they're trying to get out of the house and it's like, oh, no, we're all locked in here. Shake, take the door, shake the door handle, shake the door. Oh, it's just uh, it's just locked. No, it's like not locked. Were... It's, I was turning it to the right. You have to turn it there to the left. Or, yeah, right. And that by was the way, amazing. what did the ghost do to scare them? We don't fucking know. Nope. 
they just react to something that we're like, did they feel or hear or smell? Like we we heard like a a music sting kind of or a bowed symbol or something. But like, what did they do? We don't know. Did some wind blow yeah. something? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe a wind blew something. something. Yeah. And then we get my favorite undecipherable moment of the movie or one of them, I should say, because now... In the YouTube video of the movie, <laughs> the movie is loading. Okay. Let me so, explain <laughs> what happens, right. podcast listener. The movie we are watching, whatever it was a screen capture of, it is screen capturing a movie that is loading from a different program. And yes. so if you look at seconds so-and-so through so-and-so, you are looking at a loading screen of the thing that screen captured, and I loved it. Every second of it. <laughs> it happens like four more times in the in the video. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We saw that. We didn't know what was happening. I'm like, huh. Well, maybe it's well, downloaded. Not- but this <laughs> makes sense. Like, oh, they were just really shitty at what they were supposed yeah. to be doing in the end. Oh my God. That's great. I'm so glad you guys could explain that because I Yeah, I was, was confused. Concerned. Yeah. I thought it was YouTube at first. I was like, oh weird. My internet's pretty fast. That's not how you And then I was like, wait, that's not the internet loading no. thing. And I went backwards and I was so fucking happy. No. <laughs> There's also this really stupid moment where we see the the lawyer and the real estate agent sign paperwork. She's like, he's like, well, you know, if we could get a contract, then she's like, I have a contract right here in my hand. And he's like, nifty. <laughs> yes. That's how I know. The transferring ownership of houses works. Great. <laughs> we loved that we learned that you can purchase a house in like three and a half minutes. <laughs> three minutes. I also, oh, just, yeah, for sure. Yep. So now we get this, we get this scene which I I think is supposed to be a comic relief scene where they bring in the cleaning crew. Oh God. Yeah, to to, cl- to clean Lord. Yeah, right. No, but the first thing I wrote is like, please tell me these are not the only African Americans in the entire movie. They're not. They're, they're not. <laughs> Thank they're you. not. There's there's another yeah. Thank one. You. <laughs> and he's somebody's boss. So mm-hmm. yeah. I started making notes of like, why are we making every minority look like Stupid, right? Lower class. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 our servants. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's terrible. Right. 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 Yeah. But so yeah. So but this but this crew of of um, entirely African Americans are going to go in and clean the the brains out of this house or whatever. <laughs> the movie loads again. Mm-hmm. And and of course we're trying to do the scene where they're like they're trying to clean up the house, but it's haunted, and so creepy stuff keeps happening. But they don't have the ability to do anything creepy, so it's just like this drawer keeps opening all by itself. <laughs> yeah, you know, as though the like the runner was a, like angled wrong or something. Like that's a th- again a thing that just happens sometimes in old houses. Yeah, right. I learned from this scene that either my house is haunted or I have too many kitchen gadgets. It's one of those things, yes. guys. It's, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> we we also noticed how the camera view of the the drawer was such that you couldn't see the bottom of the drawer. So yes. you didn't even have to do anything fancy to make it open by itself. Mm. There's just right. some dude like, okay, I'm gonna pull it open now. Yeah, with a filament line yeah. or something. <laughs> Yanking on that thing. I don't even think they went that far. I think there was some dude's hand just underneath <laughs> yes. it, teasing it open. Yep. I think they were like, okay, we're not going to do fucking magician's thread. Come on, no. give me a fucking yeah. break. That's, that shit's pricey. We, no. we don't have time for fishing line. <laughs> no, they're like, Dave, move the camera up a bit. My fat fingers are in the shot. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then once again, suddenly nothing happens. Who the fuck knows what scared them? And so this woman starts screaming for the guys that went upstairs, but they're running down screaming as well. Mm -hmm. And then we get the only thing that they were allowed to do to this person's house at all, right? This is where we get the shot of the ghost has written, get out of my house in blood on the walls. Mm -hmm. And I think that like they did that early, realized how hard it was going to be to clean up and weren't allowed to use the fake blood anymore. Exactly. Right. Yeah. No, she walked in while they were painting Get Out of My House on the Walls and she was like, oh, that's going to stain. And like the rest of the day was just calming this woman down and explaining <laughs> that, no, we we promise it really is going to come out. And y- yes, we'll absolutely repaint the whole room. Yeah, well, no, we'll do the whole upstairs if it doesn't match. No, we'll, we'll make sure that because yeah. we do know that paint fades. Yeah. So they they will only use this one shot of Get Out of My House. And can I just say, if you're a ghost Get out of my house feels overly verbose to me, right? Yeah. I feel like out or get yeah. out. That's that's enough if you're yeah. writing in blood. Get out of my house at 333 Oak Street. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 333. 333, sorry. Yeah, no, right. Ma- Mary notices something about that didn't make sense was that it said get out of my house. 
But also when people would try to leave, the ghost wouldn't let them leave. Wait, so lock the, the fuck? fucking the door. Yes, thank you. Mixed messages, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess if she's missing half her brain, she's not using a lot. Oh, of, you know? right. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the cleaning lady scream, too. It was it was just it was such a great performance. Really, I'm, I'm really good. For, for cleaning really yeah. good. Yep. She brought her A game. <laughs> she did. So, yeah. So they call Rachel, the real estate agent. And they're like, we're not cleaning your house. Fuck you. Uh, we're out. And so then she schmoogles, right? Because they can't get the rights to Google. She schmoogles cleaning crews. <laughs> and we watch this video of these people singing about what a great cleaning crew they are. Oh, they're real. No, no, they no illusions. Singing. They're real. I need you to know right now, more importantly than anything in the world, that these <laughs> no. people are real and this movie is an advertisement for them. <laughs> oh, God. Seriously? They're called the Cheerful Cleaning Crew. They have two crews. They're based in Raleigh, North Carolina, and you can hire them and they will sing. I would have guessed North Carolina. Their spiel is that they sing the entire time uh -uh. they clean your house. Are you, are you being serious? So that's the part that's based on a true story. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, are you fucking with me though? Like I need to know. I'm 100% re and I'll tell you, I'll tell you how wow. I found out about it. Spoilers, this entire movie is an advertisement for Christian exorcists. Yep. And on oh their website, God. which I spent a very long time <laughs> examining, Hell yeah. at the bottom, they're like, make sure you check out the cheerful cleaning crew. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. it's a joke from the movie. It's not a joke from a movie. It's a real business that exists in the year of our Lord 2023. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. We're going to come back to them and it's going to get more amazing listeners. So, okay. So, but before we do that, we have to cut to an office party full of entirely new characters, only one of whom is going to be in the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had no idea. I'm like, what is this? I know. I'm like, party? What, where are we? What's yeah. happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, we need to show our protagonist she gets a new job at a new place. What's the best thing for a character to say to her to sort of introduce that? Is it, I'm sorry your husband died, but on the upside, you got a promotion. <laughs> that was so great. That was such a good line. Amazing. I think Mary missed it because later she's like, well, her husband died? Yeah, I don't know. I was still thinking about that unnatural yeah. scream by the cleaning lady. Sure, sure. Yeah, also, that makes sense. It, it didn't make a shit of difference that her husband died. That had nothing to do with anything. They I never thought, no, no, that was going to come it. in. She never mentions him again. Nope. No. It never comes back. She probably yeah. killed him. Yeah. <laughs> She could have just been single. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. It wasn't a thing. Right. It, well, and then it, it, I think that basically they were trying to say now, now she's not one of those like ladies about the world that doesn't get married all the way into her 30s. She's a widow. So um, it's like, so she's a good right. Christian woman. Mm. She, you know, she's not ruined. She's not, you know, she's not a lesbian <laughs> or anything. God forbid. That whore. Gotcha. Yeah, right, right. Now, I should say, first of all, I should say that this this actor is lovely. And I, I only mention that because literally everyone who talks about her character at any point in the movie will talk about how pretty she is. She's beautiful. <laughs> And secondly, we know this actor. This is the second time she's been on God Awful Movies. She was also in The Reconciler on episode 373 of this show. Mm -hmm, of oh, course. God. So she she makes you. So maybe she's not a clean, you know, if she, she gets around into the different Christian movies. Right, Wait, you met right, her in right, real yeah, life just, or just you've seen her act? She'll Christian movie for just about any damn body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming. That's I'm, a low standard. I'm assuming, these, I'm, I'm assuming these guys haven't actually met her in person. Yeah, you haven't like for no, real. No, real no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Because how would you say nice things about her acting if you did? Right. right. Yeah, yeah, that would be, it would be, be very awkward. Okay. So, and I... Look, this scene is just completely useless and I'd have left it out altogether except for there's this moment where he gives her a gift and she's like, wow, how did you know that I liked this artist? And he's like, I've always known you were a big fan of this musical artist. And they just, they say it over and over again <laughs> without ever like realizing that they're allowed to just make up a name or use a real one. Yeah. Right. It's not like you need to get the rights to say you like <laughs> Prince. Right. Well, I personally think it was nine inch nails. So. Okay. All right. Oh, nice. okay. that must have been yeah. the problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There that you go. That's, that was. <laughs> that was. That's why she started out. going down. So they could get on <laughs> the Dove channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He could have been like, I would have given you an actual vinyl LP, but I was afraid you would uh, play it backwards. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. And then also, so we see her driving to her new, like wherever she's moving. She's, she's like been promoted from this job and she's moving to a new office where she's going to take charge. And so we see her driving and they, she had to be in a rich person car because she's successful. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it's a Corvette. Sure. Right. Because they don't know anybody who owns like 
you know, the kind of sedan or SUV you'd expect this character to own. But right. the vet is a rich person car, damn it. So that that um, that's right. That tracks. And they make this actress drive it with the top down because yes. when dudes get rich and we're bald, we're like, time to drive with the hot top down and feel the wind <laughs> over my baldness. But this woman's <laughs> hair is just. Yes. <laughs> Like you can see in the two seconds of shot they make this poor woman do, she walked out with a fucking electric club level afro and they spent yes. the next three days of the shoot detangling her hair from this one establishing shot. That was some big sexy hair if I've ever seen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, you know, I think about it, it actually is not a girl thing to go out and get a, uh, a convertible Corvette. Really. Not. In my experience, no. Huh. Why they chose that? So okay, so then she we got to she got, has to check into this hotel, and they're going for like fancy upscale hotel, but they didn't really have like like this is a hotel that Eli would be mad at me for booking us. Yes, at, right. Exactly. Like, this is a this is a holiday, <laughs> right? And everyone stays there. Yes. Everyone does stay there. I'm like, what the hell? The one hotel in town. So when. The hotel receptionist, whatever, when she's like, your room is 333. And then she goes, that's my lucky number. And I'm like, oh, shit, something's up with this. Something's <laughs> up with this. Yeah. And then it turns out if I can jump ahead a little bit and then back again, the address of the haunted house is 333. Three. Yeah. Four. Right. Oh. Yeah. So, so in my mind, I'm like, how are we? So I did some math, which is actually really hard for me. <laughs> if you take all those threes and divide them into two threes at a time, you come up with <gasps> six, six, six. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. You sure do. You sure do. <laughs> but honestly, the, that's what makes a great point about how poorly made this movie is, right? Yeah. Because it's like three, three, three. She's like, oh, that's my lucky number. It's like, okay, so this movie is really pushing this, you know, series of threes at us. That'll have some significance later in the film. But no, it it will not. No. no. I had to make some shit up. Right. You have to go into yeah. Gematria or whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I assumed it related to 666, but it really was never, I mean, literally nope. was never addressed. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it actually did. I just think I'm brilliant. I just yeah, I think that's serious too, yeah. math on my phone. I'm like, yeah. okay, I got something. I got something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so then we, we get Lindsay arriving at her new office. This is where we meet the film's other African-American. He's very successful. Where's his suit to work? Uh, so... And this is also where we meet her super assistant, right? Yes. yes. Oh my God, I love her. I want her to be <laughs> next to me for the rest of my entire life and basically live my life for me because that's what she does in the movie. Yeah, really. Okay, but let's not mislabel her. She is a secretary, Shelley. Yes. The secretary. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Oh yeah, I, not an assistant. That, <laughs> no. that would be to uh, 2023. Right, she was right. a yeah. secretary. Well, I love this opening bit, right? Because she's like, you know, how do you take your coffee? And it's like, oh, that's nice. And she's like, for your newspaper, would you like the local news mm -hmm. or the Wall Street Journal? <laughs> as though those are the two options. I'm like, how about shoot myself with Laura's vintage pistol? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Did you want to learn about the hunk of punk? festival that we have on <laughs> November 3rd? Or did you want to know what's happening on the planet Earth? Those are the options. Well, or do you want to know what fucking Fox News would have you know about what's happening? And then, no, give me a real uh, newspaper. How about Jesus? God. What I love about this welcoming spiel is that, you know how they say like Trump is a poor man's idea of a rich man and a dumb man's idea of a smart guy, mm -hmm. right? This is like an idiot's idea of what an administrative assistant is, right? Right. And Indian is like, totally. she would be like, here's your coffee and I'll make sure you get the numbers every morning. Sorry, the numbers? The numbers. I'm just going to have <laughs> the number. Do you mean one through nine or all possible <laughs> numbers? Because our printing bill must be off the fucking charts. <laughs> Only prime numbers, actually. Yeah, yeah exactly. Actually that part. And they'll be on her <laughs> desk like it's 1962. No, it'd be in a fucking email, you idiots. Well, and, right? Yeah, this movie is from when? 2014, I think? Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. It's not from the 1800s. There was the internet back then. Yeah. Right. And I also, we, we need to point this out that like at no point in this movie will we ever know what the fuck this company does. She, this is, she's like Office <laughs> Lindsay, like Beach Ken. She's Office Lindsay, right? Mm -hmm. She doesn't yeah. do yeah. anything except be in an office. Well, right. is, but she has had a sales, I think. Thing. Is she? Of what? Thing? What are they is sell? she selling? So. I I, so. I, I <laughs> re reject that assumption. <laughs> I know. I don't think that. The, she came in as the boss of everyone. I don't think this movie ever goes so far as to say the word no. sales. That would be no. way too no, they specific. Do, they do Hilarious. say a sales manager at one point. That's what Corey's job is. But we're going to meet her way late in the game. 
We also we have to meet the three office gossips at this oh point. Oh my god. Who I oh, absolutely love, love them. fucking love. <laughs> yes. So okay. So I think it's the next morning. We've got now the assistant's given her her coffee and her newspaper. And she says, hey, I, you know, get with all the uh, employees. I want to have a mandatory meeting at four o'clock with the entire team. And I'm like, that's dick move. They're trying to get their fucking work done so they can leave at five. <laughs> Fuck that's you, right. 4 p.m. I'd like to have a surprise meeting on my first day. Yeah, uh, yeah. at 4 p.m. <laughs> Fuck we, you. We said that, too. We're like, what? She's going to come in and everyone's going to hate her right out of the gate. And what are you going to even meet about? And they do meet about something, but it's they meet about something that's Nothing. There's it's nothing. nothing to be it's said. Truly yeah. nothing. It's the horoscope <laughs> of business meetings, right? I, yes. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's hilarious. They give her like three minutes to talk, and of course, we don't know what this company does. So she's just like, "We need to do better and move upwards, and mm -hmm. uh, and redouble our efforts at <laughs> committing awesome. to quality." <laughs> Yeah, she says, I want to be number one in the industry. And I'm like, what industry, what industry? do yes. the makers of this movie <laughs> think that this building could possibly be number one in? I know. The number one industry in podcasting looks better than that, people. Looks more, right. so much more, right? We could not, we would be like, oh no, the number one podcast industry is like a multi-million dollar yes. media conglomerate. <laughs> she says, we're number eight. I want to be number one in the next 24 months. Now, they could have done something sane, right? She, she could have said, I want to be the highest performing office in the company in the next 24 months. In the but region. No, yeah. But no, she wants to be the top business in their industry in 24 months. So then, oh, this is maybe the most useless scene in this movie, which is a hard title to take. But we have this whole scene where the secretary is with her family. We meet her daughter and her husband and they talk about the new boss. Again, we will never see these characters again. What was the point of that? They paid three dollars when they passed the plate. <laughs> They're in. And like, they get to be in the we'll, <laughs> we'll write you in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we talk about how they absolutely bukkakied this child with sauce? Oh my right? god. They <laughs> This toddler, yes. they were like, it's a toddler. She's got a messy face. So they took nine industrial sized gallons of sauce and they <laughs> they drowned the toddler. And then they rubbed this toddler on that drowned toddler. <laughs> and they were like, this is how children eat. Yep. That, I caught that. So I have seven kids. I've seen them all at toddler stage. Mm -hmm. They're messy as shit. Not a one <laughs> has been as covered in whatever that sauce was. Like it's like they dunked her head in and kind of yeah. cleared her, her nose, her nostrils, so she could breathe. I think it counts as red face. I think we should cancel this toddler. <laughs> technically, well, it's, it, yes. the thing is, is that it's not just that there's too much of it, but it's also like dried on, right? Because like the lady goes to put to wipe it off, but like. Clearly, they put this poor kid in this and they took like 19 shots at this or whatever. But that sauce has been like there for a while. She like tries to wipe it off and it won't go. It doesn't come off. I think no. that yeah. kid still has that shit on her face at the age of 23 or whatever. She, she yeah. probably for, does. Yeah, to this or day. Or an extreme rash. For sure. Something yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, poor kid. Child abuse. That's so, fucked up. Yeah. Now, the the only thing that matters in this entire sequence that will ever come back in any way is that we also learn that the secretary loves, quote, this program. They never name it. They don't have the rights to any <laughs> nouns. Oh, yeah. It was probably 700 Club. Oh, God. <laughs> and again, keep in mind that what this means is they were writing the movie and they were like, well, you know, 14 seconds before the end of the movie, she's going to recommend a TV program. And if we don't know she's a human with eyes who watches a TV program, this whole movie's going to fall <laughs> yep. apart for people. So let's, sure the fuck let's really dig in. Yeah, there were so many. Well, there were just so many moments like that in this film that you're like, why did they spend time on this moment? What is it? What's it for? Right. The entire movie is why did they spend time <laughs> on yeah, this moment? Yeah, really. Okay. Especially, okay. especially the first third of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Point well taken. So, okay, so it's the next day. We're, we're back at the office. Lindsay's showing up and she's like telling everybody, oh, you know, I'm so sick of living in this hotel room. I sure would like to find a place to live. And... The guy who shows her around at, at the beginning, he's like, hey, you know what? I know a real estate agent. And I'm like, did the movie think that we needed to establish 
this? <laughs> right. Right. She could have just called a real estate agent. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Noah. I hate to argue with you, but your performance was way too naturalistic. Actually, what happened was this. I hate living in a hotel. Hello today. I heard you talking. I have a friend who is a realtor. Yes. <laughs> End of line. <laughs> right. Yep. Michael yep. exits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Better get your secretary to dial the number for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Right. Duh. And then we get the goddamn cheerful cleaning crew. Dude. Fuck yeah, we do. They are going to wash those brains out of Laura's wall and they're going <laughs> to do it while singing a song about Jesus. That's right. I, look, I where I draw a line is the real world. So I know that these people are real and I know that they exist, but I want to call them so badly and find out if they actually do crime scene cleanup, yes. which, by the way, is not a thing normal cleaning crews are supposed to do or is even legal for them to do, right? right. You can't just be like, let's hire happy maids to come get the brain out of the curtains. <laughs> Where's the yeah. hazmat suit? Yeah, it takes like a full-on professional company that yes. specializes in this. And one thing mm -hmm. I noticed, too, is like, girl blows her brains out. And the brains just sit around for a few days while they're trying to find people who will clean them up. Like, it's just a little weird. Several weeks, it seems a little like. Weird. Although they yeah. don't show any of that. Well, which is interesting. We assume there's brains because <laughs> well, she's right. yeah, no, They're trying the to get head. on the Dove channel here. Come on. And, and the shit that the corpse released once it was dead, obviously. Yeah, well, they're right, probably right. cleaning yeah. that as well. Yeah. Lots of it. That, yeah. The ejaculate from the police. Oh, my it was a lot yes. of stuff. Our, okay, <laughs> all right. I watched that documentary. Thank you, <laughs> ally. <laughs> Allyship. Appreciate That's it. Right. You're welcome. So we get Rachel, the real estate agent, showing up while the cheerful cleaning crew's cleaning up. They're they're singing, he's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, now, mm -hmm. right. what we're supposed to get from this, this is so fucking amazing to me, is that because this crew is singing Christian songs the whole time, the ghost has no power. That's right. Oh, over right. that. So fucking good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, 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 the real estate agent, in case you didn't get that, the real estate agent walks in and she goes, well, whatever was haunting that other cleaning crew must not like this song. Thank God <laughs> yeah. she spelled it out for us all. Right. <laughs> now, to be clear, if I was an otherworldly ghost with telekinesis and people walked in and started singing the whole world in his hands, mm -hmm. I would sacrifice all my power to be able to kill those people. Yeah. So I, I, I don't understand quite what the movie's going for, but I do get it. I well, I, I love like they stop singing for a second when Rachel comes in to say hi and I wanted the ghost to come out right then and sleep let everybody's throat or something. I hate yeah, exactly. that song. Step, oh. step, step. Yeah, and I want, so <clears throat> I, well, A, I'm sure the cleaning crew, none of them likely go to therapy, but if any of them did, I want to speak to their therapist about how they can remain chipper and sing these stupid God songs while cleaning brains out of a carpet. Right. I'm just curious. Yeah, it's a, it's a real question. Yeah. It's so inappropriate. It's so disgustingly inappropriate. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if there weren't brains, which there were, they knew someone got murdered. Like they would, they yeah. would know. And they're like, do, do, do. Right. He's got the whole world. Yeah. Have a little reverence for the dead. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, damn it. Yes. <laughs> And then there's this great, okay, so then we get maybe the best scene in the movie, right? This is where the assistant calls Rachel, the real estate agent, on behalf mm -hmm. of Lindsay while Lindsay is sitting eight inches away from her. I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so apparently they think that's how assistants work. They just do the first yep. 40 seconds of your call for you. Mm -hmm. and then hand you the phone. Well, she had to hang the phone up for her, too. Yeah, you know, she, <laughs> she did. Back. She did. <laughs> it must be really hard to, you know, when you're on a phone call to be able to reach all the way down to hang it back up. You need to right. have your yeah, secretary. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. I'll hand it to you. You need an assistant you set for it. Down. Mm -hmm. When you're yeah. angry, you're like, slam this down hard. Slam this one down hard. <laughs> yeah, really um, give it to him this time. It's right. not a good call. <laughs> and the conversation they have here is great. It's like listening to the little kids imagine what buying a house is like, right? Yes. And she goes, I need one house, please. She doesn't specify <laughs> number of bedrooms or bathrooms or square footage or nope. price range. She's just like, I'd like a house, preferably furnished, a nice one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, this, sorry, this throws me back a little bit to where we realized that main star lady, her husband died. She's got a promotion. She's going to this new job. And when she goes to move into the house, 
she has only like one piece of luggage. Oh, right. One rolling bag. One <laughs> rolling bag Sorry with all her worldly ahead. goods. I just thought of it. <laughs> yeah. Like your, yeah, your yeah, entire yeah, life uh-huh. is in your rolling Let me bring suitcase. this one suitcase up here. <laughs> and yep. her, yeah. her, 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 her baggie with all of her jewelry and shit probably took up the most part of it. Anyways. Really? Sorry, super yeah. Uh-huh. She's yeah. got some bangles. But yeah, so, but then we get this scene where she pulls up to take a look at the haunted house and we get the ghost lady peeking out the window again. Again, they hold the shot way too long. Or is it long enough? (laughs) Noah. (laughs) I just love that the ghost has to part the curtain with its telekinesis to peek at new beer. God damn it. uh, Can I just get like an inch out in front of the window pane? No, I got to stay inside. God damn. All right, fine, Uh fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And then, so we watch these two women walk through the house going, oh, this is a lovely room. Oh, this gets a lot of afternoon light or whatever. But the music behind it is going like, oh, it's very creepy light though. (laughs) (laughs) My favorite is they aim for a fake pop scare in this scene, right? Which is when main character lady goes into the bedroom and she goes, oh my. And we we think she's going to see like blood or guts or a ghost or something, but she's just saying, I love it. And I wrote in my notes, it's weird to make that noise in reaction to that, but I live with my wife who regularly screams in reaction to drinking water. So I get it. And what I'm saying is I get this scene. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that all the furniture is fantastic except for a rocking chair. And oh, it's, yeah. It's all grandma furniture. Right. All of it. Right. Yes. <laughs> and, okay, who's, wait, wait, wait. But now, see, I'm thinking things I haven't yet. The The lady that killed herself in the house, I'm assuming she was the homeowner. Mm-hmm. She lived by herself. She was not old. She was youngish. A, why does she have a 12 million square foot home? Why the grandma ass furniture? Like, do we know any of this? Well, and, and it's even weirder than that, right? Because they make this whole big deal of the rocking chair, right? She's like, oh, I don't like this rocking chair. It doesn't really fit with the decor of the house. And, she, and the real estate agent's like, well, you know, this rocking chair has been passed down for generations within a family. And we're like, oh, okay. So like they're come back, they'll come back to this. We'll definitely ever see this rocking chair again. I'm sure that will be revisited <laughs> mm-hmm. in the play. No, we just no. don't. I know. Yeah. It's so weird. You would think that they would show the ghost rocking in a like a weird, creepy way. That I could get into like a really long shot of yeah. the rocking over yeah. and over. But she's just bitching about the rocking chair. <laughs> For no reason. Nope. Yeah. Just, I just, just hate that rocker. <laughs> yep. And then and then they go outside and she's like, well, I like it. I'll take it. And the, the real estate agent's like, sure, you want a receipt? I mean, yeah. <laughs> basically, do you want a bag for the house? <laughs> yeah. We died. We died on that. We're like, oh, my God, she just bought a house. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's just skip closing and get your moved in right, right. away. No, she says something about I have to go by the bank. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you'll have to go get the money for that. House. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then she's on the phone. I just bought a house. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. She's like, I'll just go get some money from the bank and go grab my suitcase from room <laughs> yes, 3331. Yeah, one into a house. Yes. <laughs> How, like, does anyone in their congregation who created this movie, has anyone bought a house? I'm, no. Someone know, right? must have known this was stupid. <laughs> you got to imagine. The, the ending of this movie, you have to work backwards from the ending of this movie. For anyone to think about the ending of this movie, they have to think about anything else in their life, which is why they think, Businesses make numbers mm-hmm. and houses can be purchased with monies from the bank. Yep. <laughs> yeah, on the spot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just on the spot. Oh, well, yeah. you know, what an upgrade. She moved from a room and then added a three and got a whole house. Right. Yeah, yeah, fuck exactly. yeah. yeah. That's all she had to do. Add one three. There you go. Well, and she again, she walks through and she's like, oh, this is perfect. Again, this is a ginormous ass house furnished. Like, I don't. I don't understand why it seems, seems to be like, single yeah. women living in this huge ass house and wanting to kill themselves. Right. Like it seems like a person like her would be looking for like an apartment downtown or something. Yeah. But no. <laughs> right. Well, she doesn't look at anything else either. There's like, oh, I have True. a house for you. Oh, I love it. Okay. Yep. Here, let me go to the Done. bank. It's yeah, mine. Looked Done. at the one house. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're now caught up to the part where a normal haunted house movie would fucking start having established absolutely nothing. So we're going to take a well-earned break, but we're back in a flash with even more unwanted presence. Great job on the episode so far. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Now, Eli and I were actually going to order some wings. Do you, do you guys want some? Um, I, I mean, I think we're okay. No problem. Um, Eli, just the usual then. Yeah, you got it. One twenty-four box of wings, one tofu wings, extra sauce. No, no, extra sauce 
on the tofu. Uh, what? What's he doing? Oh, you know, inflation has made ordering takeout a real pain. But if you shout from the upstairs window, they can kind of hear us over at the wing stop. No, 24, 20. Well, Noah, if you were looking to save some money, why not cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at Mint Mobile? 15 bucks a month? How is that possible? No, extra sauce. You don't even sell socks. Why would I order socks from you? By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. It's true. I switched over my whole family when they became a sponsor, and I'm paying less than a third of what I was when I was working with Big Cell Phone. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right. Looks like we could use the app after all, Eli. Uh, It's too late. He's actually already on his way over with the order. Is he holding socks? Yeah, those are extra socks again. Good morning, everyone. I'm your new boss, Mrs. Smitherson. Now, I know I'm new here, but I think you've got a great team. And I'd like to see us be number one this time next year. Now, the way we're going to do that is... uh, Excuse me, I'm I'm sorry. Oh, yes. You have a question? Uh, Number one in, in what? Like sales, profits, productivity... Uh, both, so, or all of that. So our strategy well, will be... I'm, wait, hold uh, on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Guys, I'm really just getting started here. Well, right, it's just it's just that we're not going to be number one. Well, not with that attitude, we're not. See? No, I just like, it, it literally, it doesn't matter what industry we're in. The, the, the number one of any industry is a multi-million dollar company. We're like six desks in a conference room next to a Planet Fitness. Well, if you look at my predicted sales, I think you'll see we've got a lot of potential. That, that's literally just an arrow pointing up and to the right. Correct. Well, on the way to number one. <sighs> look, lady, I don't know how to tell you this, but you can't just decide to become number one. That's not, that's not even something. Guys, guys, I just read in Business Weekly, we're number one. Our numbers are up. Hooray! I knew you could do it, team. What the, what the fuck is even happening right now? <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Lindsay moving into her new house in the rain. And it's in the rain, I guarantee you, because they had this house for four fucking days. So if it was raining, they were shooting in the rain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and this is supposed to be like a creepy stuff happening montage, right? The ghost moves her purse, (laughs) right? And I wrote in my notes, okay, so either my house has a ghost or my wife has ADD. One of those things is happening right Uh, now. Right, (laughs) right. Well, they had to have something happen with that purse because they, we look at it for so long on the table. Well, it's, it's there. She sets it down so conspicuously that we're like, let me guess, the ghost is going to move the fucking purse. Oh, look, the ghost moved yeah, the, the purse. Yeah, the ghost moves the purse. What a surprise. And, and why? Yeah, right. What was the, what was the ghost trying to accomplish here? Yeah, it didn't you need anything. to reapply your lipstick ASAP. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but also, I, I want to point out, though, that that kind of thing, because they over and over again in this movie, they'll start trying to convince Eli that his house is haunted, They're, right? They'll be like, oh, things move that I could have sworn I put in the other place. My dog will bark at nothing. My cat will stare at something that isn't there. The house must be haunted because this movie is literally trying to convince Eli that his house is haunted. It's going to try to sell haunted house ghost removal services at the end. Right. That's right. The fact that this movie doesn't end with a coupon code is the only saving <laughs> grace that it has. <laughs> God. But you know what? That dog didn't react to anything in the house. So. That's true. No, no, no they could doesn't. not get that dog to bark. Nope. <laughs> that dog was like, this is some dumb shit and I want to sleep through it. I want to have no yep. part of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, we'll get to the dog in a second because where the fuck the dog came from is, is, is a mystery to everyone and <laughs> oh, we have yeah, to explore that a little bit. <laughs> But before we get the dog, we get her introducing herself to the neighbor 
Mm-hmm. And she comes over. She's like, "Hi, I'm I'm your new neighbor." And the neighbor's like, "Hi, I hate you. I just fucking hate you, and will for the rest of the movie." She's like, "Oh, that's yep, that's weird." Right. I wrote my notes. Okay, so this is what it's like when Noah introduces himself to his neighbors. All right, we got all <laughs> the got everything going down down in Georgia. He's covered now. I love her too. She's like, "I hope this one doesn't die too." Yes. Yes. <laughs> to herself. To herself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like, because she's not going to warn anyone. She's just nope. like, oh, yeah. her neighbor is going to get slashed. Yeah. Right. Good shit. So, okay. So the next morning we get her waking up, her alarms going off. Apparently the house came furnished with a dog, right? Because now she has a dog. She will have a dog. <laughs> like, th- where was this dog? Right. Because right? Right? we saw her check into the hotel. There was no dog. Oh, the dog was in the suitcase. <laughs> oh, I feel like the dog got a nicer hotel, right? Like when Noah's oh, like, we can stay at this Red Roof Inn, me and Heath get a different hotel. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what happened. Is the dog that was like, no, okay, right. no, thank you. Right. So. <laughs> Hilarious. I know. I didn't see the dog in the convertible. No, Did you? Nope. no, exactly. No, right. So, okay. So she's getting ready to for work and everything. And she... She finds the diary from the beginning that that the ghost, the lady that committed suicide was writing in right before she killed herself. Yeah. Two cleaning crews missed that diary. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And the thing that has pissed me off the most about the diary, she never fucking reads it. Thank you. You Guarantee you. (laughs) If I see someone's diary sitting there and that person is there and they turn their head, I'm going to read the fucking diary. Right. She found a diary that no one could bust her for reading and she didn't. Yeah, give me a fucking break. Yeah. Ooh, that's the most unbelievable part. Give this movie credit, right? Because we've made a lot of fun of this movie today. But this movie was like, guys, we don't have it in us to write a diary of a lady <laughs> who's being haunted. We can't even write a movie of a lady right, who's yeah. being haunted. We'll just, funny. It'll just show up in some spooky places. Okay, there no one will miss it. Well, and it's also so fucked up because she's like, oh, this is a diary from the woman who committed suicide. I'll throw it in the trash. I'm like, you don't even know if she has family, you asshole. Nope, garbage. I- you just- Garbage. <laughs> and hello, evidence, evidence, like right. that's that should have been taken away with the cop. In right, exactly. The cop. At the very least, you should check and see if they want it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to meet Corey. Now, Corey is another employee at this same company that works for Lindsay. She is the director of purchasing. She, the two of them will become friends and there will never be a reason for that within the movie. Except for if you're a lesbian in your mind, you're like, oh, they're banging on the I'm side. Like, well, right. on a date? No question. Yes, <laughs> they're totally banging. Yeah. That's the thing is that they present this because she's like, hey, do you want to go to dinner with me tonight? And she's right. like, I would love to go to dinner with you tonight. And I'm like, does this movie not know? Does this Christian movie not know these two women are fucking? <laughs> <laughs> does it think that they're just, just this, this movie's just like, they must be roommates. <laughs> yeah, this right? movie, yeah. Yeah. This movie, I guarantee you, the guy who wrote this movie and directed this movie and starred in this movie was like, you know, how are we? Well, you know, my wife has that friend, Laura, who they go, they go <laughs> right, to those yeah, long yeah. candlelit dinners together. <laughs> yeah. Laura, Laura is a full on carpet muncher, too, by the way. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. <laughs> And we should point out, by the way, this character's name is Corey. The assistant's name is Carrie. I, I know. Just, come why on. would they do that? <laughs> so fuck with me the whole time. <laughs> sorry, secretary. Oh, yeah, secretary. yes. No, sorry. I, I keep trying to be too respectful. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously. Don't do yeah, that. please. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So then we get Lindsay and Corey on their dinner date, and we get Eli's best worst flirting. Oh, let's hear it. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, so here's right. what happens they're on their dinner date. And the waiter comes over and he says, the gentleman at the bar has purchased you the house appetizer. I yes! fucking died. I yes! fucking died. Yeah. Not a drink. He sent over cheese sticks. I the love house so appetizer. Have you boys ever done that? I assume you've gone to bars and clubs back in your single days. Like, have you ever sent over the house appetizer to try to woo a woman into your bed? That is so generous of you to assume that we ever went to a bar or a club. That is so, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to us on this you're, podcast. You're I'm really, I'll tell if, if you shaking asking, my head as I said it. Am I the kind of idiot who would try to send someone mozzarella sticks as flirtation? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Would I end up eating those mozzarella sticks by myself when they yeah, were right, sent right. back in horror? <laughs> yes. Also that true. true. Also true. Well, so, but my first thought was because like, you know, we all thought this was a couple. So I was going to ask you, does, does that happen with lesbian couples? You go out on a, on a dinner date and guys are like, I, we, we sent you drinks. We sent you 
appetizers or something like does that ha- is that like a constant oh all all the damn time only all because the they time. want a threesome <laughs> oh, oh, that's the only oh, reason oh, so oh my clearly dude <laughs> sending the cheese was like oh cheese will get two <laughs> girls oh, like right, two girls right. on my job yeah. instead of yeah. why, why bother with martinis when I can yeah. throw no. some matzo sticks <laughs> imagine <laughs> the <laughs> confidence of men <laughs> that you see a gay couple and you're like hey any chance you both want to fuck the only thing I know about you is that you're not shopping for my brand. And I'm wondering yeah. if you would like to share. Well, that's why he was sending cheese sticks because they were slightly phallic, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, right, my right. Cheese yes. sticks. Warming them up to the idea. Yeah, got I get you. It. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's something- That's why you guys have stayed gay. The minute you have a mozzarella stick, bam, right back bam. to the gravy. <laughs> oh, every I, time. I can't have a mozzarella stick. That is some scary shit because I was with a mozzarella stick for 21 years and I don't want to go back. And so don't send me. <laughs> you escaped the mozzarella, the mozzarella stick. I escaped right. it. I don't want to go in reverse. <laughs> no. they, they, but to, to your point, there is something so male, and this is, of course, not all men, but so many men when that, even my friends that I've known forever and I'm gay, blah, 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 they just think I need a good fuck and I'll be straight again. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work like you that, You can still dudes. get a good fuck and not be straight. <laughs> 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 right. So, yeah, I'm glad the guy went, with the, went for the cheese. He, he, he could have pulled it off, but he didn't. And so, okay, so yeah, now now that we have that important director of purchasing, whining, and dining scene out of the way, <laughs> it's it's the following morning. No dog this time. The dog's like, I I am one scene. You get one scene with me. They only had the dog for one day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back to the pound. Okay. And then, of course, this is the scene where she goes into the bathroom. She lights her. I'm going to take a morning shit candle. And then she walks back out for a second and sees that the diary has escaped from the trash and is now on her bedside table. (laughs) And in case you don't get the significance of that, she literally says to the camera, I thought I threw that in the trash. Something's not right. (laughs) (laughs) And look, a lot of horror movies will go for the I thought I threw that in the trash. It's a trope. It's corny. But only movies of Christian quality will be like, I threw that away. And now it's back. Like, we can see the <laughs> presence of it, ma'am. Mm-hmm. In a normal, almost half-decent horror movie, there would be a reason that the journal was brought back. There's something right. in there she's supposed to read. There's yes! something, no, right. The ghost is moving shit around. Like, I want this over here. Right. There's no reason for the purse or the diary. I know. Too bad the ghost didn't, like, whip it open to, like, page 24 and write in blood, Red get Red out of yeah. my house. That could have been exciting. Right. No, it should, should turn to page 333 of the fucking diary and find something about the rocking chair there. Obviously. Thank you. Stupid fucking exactly. movie. So meanwhile, the office gossips are reading an article in the newspaper about a haunted house other than hers. Right. 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 There's just like a Let's introduce that. Different story about a haunted house in the news. That's so awesome. Think about (laughs) how stupid everyone involved had to be to write that scene. Yes. Everyone. Well, we need to bring up that the house is haunted. Could she say about the haunting in our house? God damn it, Greg, (laughs) shut your mouth. They're going to be reading an unrelated newspaper article (laughs) or I'll shoot you with this antique pistol I brought to the movie set. (laughs) And lest you start thinking that this movie didn't belong on god-awful movies as they're reading it, one of the three office gossips says, you know, my church says that this is um, a demonic activity type thing, but I'm not too sure about that, right? So hint, mm-hmm. hint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Let's throw the church in. But yeah, the front, we see the front page headline, right? Because then we cut to Lindsay looking at her at her Wall Street Journal or whatever. And it the front page headline says, local house haunted experts say. I'm like, experts <laughs> in what? <laughs> you know what? Experts. <laughs> That's right. How didn't how come they didn't have her go for the local paper instead of the Wall Street Journal when she was given the options? I don't even believe she was reading that damn newspaper. Yeah, right. she just yeah. Look good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This movie's falling apart. It is. I want to know who the experts are. Like that, yes. I love just the term. Like, it's experts. like when you say experts say mm-hmm. or scientists say, like, who are these people right. that are saying these things that are not true? Yes. Yeah, that's some good shit. So, yeah, so, but then she's like, oh, you know what? Maybe that's it. Maybe my house is haunted. That's why lights are coming on and candles are 
blowing out or whatever the dumb shit. She's, so she goes mm-hmm. and she gets Corey and she's like, hey, will you come to my uh, office while I explain the entire plot of the movie so far to you in painstaking detail? And she's like, I sure will. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, of course. Well, duh, you always call your girlfriend for a quick, for like a nooner in the in the office and you talk right. about your, yeah. your house being haunted. No, I, I get that. There's nothing wrong there. Come on in. I've got mozzarella sticks. Maybe that is it. The writer of this movie is sitting there going like, I bet that's what they're talking about in there when her, her they're probably talking about haunted house. Houses haunted when her houses and her friend get those hotel rooms on. in the middle of the day so that they can talk <laughs> about how mm-hmm. they can't talk about it at the house because that's where the ghosts are. Yeah, yeah obviously. It's all coming together. <laughs> can I also just say, as a practicing lesbian, sorry. who needs practice? Who needs practice? <laughs> as a class, <laughs> as, as a practicing lesbian, my gaydar was going off so many times when those two were together on set. Yes. Just saying. In yeah. real fucking life, okay? Yeah. In real life. That's all. I have a hunch that this movie, the people who made this movie were like, look, this movie sucks, but we have two lesbian porn actors (laughs) who are left over from their shoot, three girls, two cups. And they, we can actually shoot a bunch of footage for the movie with them during the day. And then at night we can do the pickup shots for three girls, two cups. (laughs) Perfect. Oh my God. It's so good. Well, and then they, they come up with this dumbass. So, She's like, Corey, what should I do about my house being haunted? And Corey says, I've got a great idea. Why don't you throw a housewarming party? That made no fucking I mean, sense. But it's awesome. The thing was so strange because it was like the next day. <laughs> yes. Well, right. Not only, the, yeah, not only is that an insane thing, but then she starts walking around to the office to people that she's clearly never had any social interaction with and saying, I, your boss, would like you to come to my house at 6 p.m. tomorrow, tomorrow. night. Yes. <laughs> well, she did mm-hmm. call a mandatory fucking meeting like uh, 37 four, minutes yeah, after yeah, she right. showed up. Yeah. So they're probably like, oh, we have to go to this too, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Well, and, and they even just to emphasize what an asshole boss she is, they even have the the secretary go like, "Well, I actually I have I have plans with my family." She's like, "Please, I really need you to be there." And she's like, "I'm not really sure that I can." She's like, "Please, I, it's really important." And she's like, "Well, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. such a mm-hmm. dick move." <laughs> and to be clear. It is not important, right? It's not like the secretary has a ghost detector hidden up her hooch, right? Maybe. Right. There are already people coming to the party. This is what a boss thinks is the right way to behave when you're inviting people over to your house like the lonely weirdo you are. You you force them. Yeah. And again, what's the... Like, you're bringing them to a house where you know there's a violent ghost. Is this like a... You know, there's a bear chasing us, so I'll have someone to push down kind of thing. Yeah, what was yeah, the possible. point? Like if we if we bring enough bait, <laughs> then yes. the ghost will come out. Like what what and then what? And then we'll you'll get her in a full Nelson. You stand behind her, I'll push <laughs> her over. You know, I j- <laughs> Yeah, I didn't understand that logic either. It was kind of like, well, do they think that the warmth of the house warming will make the ghost go, Oh, they're all right. I'll just leave now. Right now I'm out I- number. I, I yeah. yeah, I think I know what it was. I think that this was, because this was Corey's idea, right? Mm-hmm. This is Corey's idea of role play. So we're going to have this, all the people in the office come, right? And be here. And then somehow, some way, this is going to turn into Corey and the other girl banging in the bathroom. Yes, That's all I can of come course. up with. Is that all it? Right. Is that, okay. Okay. You need to get your lover over to your house, but you don't want to seem suspicious. <laughs> throw you, so you throw a super lame house party. Mm-hmm. Everyone gets tired and leaves early, and then you and Corey can finally skizzer. Or even better. Like a voyeurism thing? Or maybe <laughs> it's, it. Maybe you convince them it's haunted so that everybody runs the fuck away, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. and, then, and then you can say, Corey, hold me, I'm scared. And suddenly the mm-hmm. nipples are hard. There and all of a sudden clothes are coming off. That's it. That's it. Got yep. it. I'm writing all these tips down, by the way. There you go. Sure. House Next time, uh, yeah, party. just all you need in that scenario is an order of mozzarella sticks. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. Grease the wheels. <laughs> so, yeah, so everybody comes up over for the housewarming. There's this great moment where everybody's showing up and the dog is just screeching at everybody on the way in. <laughs> mm-hmm. They don't know how not to have that dog in that room, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> 
And then she she goes, they they all sit down for dinner and she's like, all right, I want to just go around the room and everybody tell me how you became an employee of the corporation. And I'm like, fun. <laughs> I would literally, I would do anything to get fired in that moment. I'd be like, hey, I'm a child rapist. Just so everyone you knows, I'm a, a child rapist. Yeah. Do you have a Luger? Anybody has a Luger? <laughs> Anyone have an old timey <laughs> gun? I can shoot myself in the head. Totally. Okay, but to be fair, the response that she gets is so funny that I laughed by myself. Let, let me let me a little give you a little backstory. My wife had COVID this week, which means she was isolating oh. in her bedroom. I slept in our living room. There were no days. There were no nights. I just lived in our living room for a full week this week, mm -hmm. and the response she gets from this one woman. I stopped the movie and cried with laughter alone in my living room for 10 minutes because she asks, how did you get involved with the company? And this woman says, again, I am not joking. She goes, I have a great story, but I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. The fact like, that I, like, I need to snort a line first, though. I, so. I'm sorry. I would love to tell you my story, but I absolutely must take a shit right now. <laughs> uh, let me just say, I'm glad I'm wearing brown stockings because oh, there oh, is God. a real mess down there. I've got a turtle head poking out, and it's really just about yes. where this thing resolves. But when I get back, I'll tell you about my high school internship. It's going to mm -hmm. be great. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, Random. let's take the long route upstairs to the yes. master's. Oh, there's yeah, no there's fucking talk about way that? that there are no bathrooms downstairs <laughs> in that house. <laughs> of course, there there have to be. But, and there, okay, the house is huge. For sure, there's some on the main floor. Let's pretend none of them are working. There's going to be at least two or three upstairs, for sure, too. <laughs> Who ever sends randos from the office into their master bedroom bathroom. Right. Nobody does that. Well, especially when these are the gossips. These are the fucking office gossips. And you're like, would you like to walk through my bedroom to use the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I yeah. get it. Because I will do anything to get into someone's master bathroom because that's where the secrets are. <laughs> right? That, if someone's like, oh yeah, it's just down the hall. I'll be like, actually, I can't go to that one. Is there <laughs> something that maybe has like every medication and also what toothpaste do you use where I can go to? Oh, there it is. Where can I rifle through your drawers and find the bio? Vibrators. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. you are you are the reason, by the way, why nobody sends guests to the master bathroom because right. they know you're gonna rifle through their shit. So That's they're right. just, yes. oh upstairs. I'm That's going there good. no matter what. It's it's your choice as to whether or not I pretend I'm going upstairs <laughs> to see your kids' rooms or whether or not I go up there to, to pretend I'm taking a shit. But I am Fair. getting in that sock drawer <laughs> and I'm seeing whether you use water-based or oil-based lube. Just so you know, <laughs> that is a rule for me Fair. personally. Fair enough. So yeah, so but the but they go. She goes up to take a shit, and of course the ghost has trashed the bathroom, and she screams. And it looks like, by the way, that that the room looks like like when people didn't give us Halloween candy when we were kids, right? Like that, <laughs> I know. that's is just some toilet paper. Like no, there's nothing scary here. No. Yeah, I wrote down the ghost. TP'd the bathroom. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. yes. Because again, the lady who they borrowed this mansion from was like, oh, and the bathroom's all messed up. Okay, I'm just going to stand here while you destroy the bathroom I spent six months designing. And they're like, mm -hmm. I think one piece of toilet paper is fine. <laughs> That'll probably get the yeah. <laughs> point across. A question for you that the movie did not answer. So when the person went into the bathroom... Was it already like that? And she screamed because if I went in someone's bathroom and it was like that, I'd be like, holy shit, what a slob, right? Or was she trying to take a massive dump and then suddenly every, like the toilet oh, paper or whatever. Oh, interesting. Like, what happened? Right. Was she giving birth to a Chipotle burrito season two? And <laughs> Thank then it, you. Because here's the thing. If you're taking a shit and stuff starts to happen, you can't just stop taking a shit. No. You have to sit there shitting being like, ah, I mean, I'm <laughs> right. still shitting, ah. But that's, that, that's the appropriate scream. You don't scream if you walk into someone's right, bathroom yes, exactly. that hasn't been cleaned up in a while. It's not a scream-worthy moment there. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but they scream. <laughs> Everybody has to leave unless Noah starts screaming every time he walks into my bathroom. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, a ghost! No, just still slob. So, but all the gossips leaves, and they leave Corey, Lindsay, and and the secretary back there talking about how haunted her house is. And there's this dumbass fucking moment where, like, Corey's like, "Well, why don't you come stay in my house? You could sleep on the other side of my bed. I only use one." <laughs> <laughs> right. right. 
We know how that starts. And she's like, no, I'm going to stay here. This is my house, damn it. She will decide like eight minutes from now not to stay in this house. Yes. Right? <laughs> she's lived there for three days. Right. Missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. Take Corey up on the offer. She's hot. Yeah. God, I, I, so this could have been she made up the entire ghost shit just to get into Corey's pants. I know. That would have been a good story. <laughs> much, much better movie. Much better movie. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> So then we watch her clean up the trash that's left over from her aborted uh, dinner party. We actually watch that. Oh, right. We watch her take the trash out to the road. All I'm kind of surprised she didn't have the secretary do that. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> the secretary's you know? just out there breaking. Uh, yeah, right. No, you're right. So she takes the trash out and, and the uh, old lady neighbor is also taking the trash out at the same time. And this is where she's like, you know, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but you your house is filled with the spirit of death and everyone who lives there dies really quickly after they move in. And she's like, oh, you um, you saved that information, huh? You um, were rationing that out, are you? That's <laughs> mm-hmm. nice of you. But that's enough to convince her to leave, right? She's like, oh, well, I knew there was a suicide, but there was also a murder in the house. I'm going. Can I stay at your place? Right. Yeah, why? Like, call Corey, y'all. Can right. Bang. What are you doing? <laughs> the neighbor doesn't like you. Sometimes you need the gentle, guided hand of an older woman. <laughs> Hold on, while I throw up. So that you're ready for the Corys in your life. Okay? okay, not everyone needs a pillow princess. <laughs> I'm very grossed out. Next door neighbor lady, she's gonna bowling ball you. You know, this is <laughs> this is an all night long situation. <laughs> 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 Dry hump? She's got a hump back, all right? She's going to <laughs> teach you some things. <laughs> the bells. <laughs> Sanctuary. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so she goes back to her house to get the dog. At least she gets the dog. And then she brings it over to the neighbor. And she's like, can I stay here? And the neighbor's like, no. And she's like, well, I have nowhere else to stay. She's like, no, because the other chick wants to fuck you. I know. I've been watching the movie. I live right next to your driveway staring at your house. Jesus. Like, I don't know. Her exact quote is, don't talk to me. Just go in the guest room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, she asked her to. She's like, is that dog going to shit everywhere? And she's like, no, probably right. not. And she's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, fine. Go. Well, they can't say shit on a Christian movie. Obviously. Yeah, right. No, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Then it's the next morning at the neighbor's house. And we open up on them having coffee together. And the neighbor is yelling about how bad the coffee is. And I'm mm-hmm. like, but it's your coffee. I know. <laughs> right, like, I thought that was did weird. she go back to her haunted house to get beans? Like, <laughs> we're at good your point. House. This whole scene is fucking amazing because what very <laughs> clearly happened is she was like, "And can your mom play the neighbor?" And she was like, "Yeah, but you know, she's just going to treat everyone like shit, right?" Because <laughs> all the beats of the horror movie of like, "Thanks for letting me stay, no problem, dear. You can always call me." All those beats are being established, but. Fucking no illusions. The lady version is like, fuck you. Get the fuck out of my head. Get out. Get out. I'll kick you in the fucking so knee. Get, get and out. take my coffee with you because it sucks. <laughs> it you, know sucks. you just right. You just gave right. that neighbor uh, way too much credit comparing her to Noah. Oh, <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you. Just kidding. See, the compliments are just flying this week. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. But, this is mm-hmm. good. This is the self-confidence episode of God Awful Movies. <laughs> <laughs> but did you look at the color of the coffee? I understand why she was complaining about it. It was like orange. It was very strange. It was not coffee colored at all. (laughs) But it was her coffee. Yeah. So she mixes it with Tang or something. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So she says, get out of here and take that animal with you. And like, and Lindsay's like, I wasn't going to leave you my fucking dog. Right. On her way out, she says, and I quote, she grabs this baseball bat from this, from right by the door. She goes, all right, but I'm borrowing your ball bat. Okay. She did. She said ball bat. And I was so turned off by then. Okay. Well, first of all, I have a lot of questions about that. But my mm-hmm. my real question is, because I we all have that moment of anomia where you can't quite think of the word. You're like, oh, what's that thing called? But what happened in the writer's room that this guy wasn't like, what's that thing called? And mm-hmm. no one filled in baseball bat. Right. right. No one in any part of this movie making process, craft, shooting, the actors, the writer, the directors, no one was like, oh, that's actually baseball. Do you mean baseball no. bat? Not one person. Let Lindsay's like line and they just went with it. Right. But even if nobody could come up with the base, you could leave out the ball. Right. Because you could say, <laughs> I'm borrowing your Bat. Bat. That bat, bat is too. an acceptable like, word. Yep. Any, like more or less is fine. <laughs> so, 
And also, she gonna hit the ghost with a fucking bat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I um knowledge says that ghosts you can't actually touch them, right? That's what makes them ghosts. They move through things. Definitionally, yeah, you can't conk one with a Louisville slugger. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> makes no fucking sense. Just once I want that to work, though. Right? Just <laughs> one horror movie. Yes. I want someone to swing a bat at the ghost and for the ghost to just be like, oh, God, oh, you got me. Oh, I was, I was being solid so I could move some shit spookily, but you got me right in my kidney. And now my kidney hurts in my ghost kidney. <laughs> oh, God. So yeah, so and then she goes to work the next. It's like it's the next morning. She's got to she's got to go to work and have that awkward. My house got too haunted at the party last night. Conversation with her coworkers. Was that the walk of shame that she did? Yes, she didn't sleep at her exactly. own house? Thank you. The entire staff of this office that makes numbers will treat her demonic <laughs> possession throughout the rest of the movie like a fender bender or termites. Right. It's right. So yes. True. Yes. How's yeah? How's that plumbing issue in your house now? Yeah. <laughs> Except it's a. Yes. She's like, yeah, the walls were covered in blood. And then she says, and I want to make sure I got this right. She says, and worse, I had to stay with my neighbor. I'm sorry. Worse than a spectral demon wrote <laughs> forbidding words in blood on your wall was you had to hang out with a cranky lady who lives next door. Mm -hmm. And also you didn't because you could have fucked Corey instead. Exactly. I know. Yeah. Every choice was wrong there. Every choice. But then this movie takes the greatest goddamn act to turn in the history of god awful movies hell yeah because the gossip say what you need is to hire yourself a psychic and a ghost hunter to come into your house <laughs> that's when we know shit's about to go down yes yes and it's going to be expensive we're not going to get any estimates we're just going to go with the first one mm -hmm. right <laughs> yeah so she's she's like okay well that now that's a thing i have to do so let me call my secretary and make her do it of course right <laughs> So she calls the secretary and she's like, hey, I need the best psychic available. And I'm like, they're all tied. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're all tied for best. Or they're all number eight. Yeah. Right. I was going to say, yeah, they're, they're all equally good and or bad. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I need the best psychic available and also the best ghost hunter team. I don't yes. care how much it costs. Right. <laughs> yeah, but the secretary does let her know that it is expensive. We have no idea what that means, expensive, no. mm -hmm. but she does have to let her know. No, but again, since <laughs> this movie is like trying to sell us on exorcism services, the fact that they won't tell you how much it is, it's a lot like that, like, you know, those those infomercials where they're trying to sell you a sauna and they'll never tell you a fucking price. Right, exactly. Um, so yeah, but so we jump ahead a little bit to the uh, assistant coming back and telling her, oh, hey, I found you a psychic and I found you a ghost hunter. We got you good ones. We got you Socrates the psychic. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that sounds a legit, like a legitimate human being. Weird poll. Who I should pay money to. <laughs> Absolutely. And also pinpoint ghost hunters. The guys from TV. <laughs> End point. <laughs> we should check them out, like uh, the cheerful cleaning crew, see if they're real too. They probably they are. They might be. Absolutely. Probably yeah. are, yeah. Let's well, send it them, is, send them it is based on a true story. True, that's right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so now the go the gossips over hear this and they run in and they're like, oh my gosh, she took our advice and she si hired Socrates the Great, the psychic of which we are all fans. <laughs> apparently I mean jumping up and down yes. fangirling yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're so right, excited right like the Beatles on Ed <laughs> Sullivan yes yes all right well I'll tell you what Th those three are excited and that makes three of us so I guess we can take another break but first let me give act three the hard sell will Socrates the great be everything you hoped he would be will the last third of this movie be three times as nuts as the first two thirds Will this movie turn out to be a 90-minute commercial for an actual ghost removal service? Okay, I kind of spoiled that one already. Find out the answers to the other two questions are also yes when we return for the better, worse than expected conclusion of Unwanted Presence. Excuse me. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you were sitting alone. Can I buy you some double bacon potato skins? Uh, sorry, what? They're really quite good here. Oh, I'm actually waiting for some friends. Well, now we don't have to be hungry while we wait, do we? Your potato skins, sir. Sorry, you got two orders? Well, after all, a man never lets a pretty lady eat alone. 
I didn't even know this place served food. There's a restaurant on the other side of the hotel. So tell me, where are you from? Is it is it silly to say come here often? You know, I actually think I see my friends over there. Uh, but thanks for the potato skins. Double bacon loaded potato skins. She's gone. Again. Hey, man. Um, if you want to order and eat two orders of potato skins, you can just do that. Shut up, Greg. Fine. Fine. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action meeting Socrates the Great. He's showing up at that hotel that's beneath Eli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only hotel in the town, apparently. Well, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And I love every choice this actor made, right? Because they told this guy <laughs> dressed like a psychic. Oh, he did. And he <laughs> did. Fuck yeah, they did. He nailed it. <laughs> he sure did. Yeah. He dresses like every picture of every person my wife has ever told me is famous in folk music. That's what this guy looks like. Oh, <laughs> that's true. Oh my He's God. He's the best yes. spoons player in the world, huh? Okay. Yeah, I oh. see that. I see that. <laughs> Does he know his jacket has sleeves? Or no, that's a choice. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. Well, like, how come he never puts the sleeves? Did you notice, though, that his arms looked really short and the sleeves look really long. He probably borrowed it from someone. And it's like, shit. Oh, they go. The sleeves are too long. Doesn't fit. I can't put them in. It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he goes into the hotel and he says, my name is Socrates the Great. And I, I so wanted the receptionist to go, no fuck it isn't. I don't know what it is, but it ain't that. <laughs> Consummate professional. She's like, mm -hmm, yes. it sure is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need to see your birth certificate right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to call yourself X the Great. Other people have to give you that. You can't. Yeah, that's right. an honorific. That's definitely not something you take on. Even Cher wasn't like Cher the Great. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty full of himself. We also get a shot of him meditating. Yes. And I, I think oh, this is the same as the like husband who thinks that the friendship she has at the office is that they, you know, share hotel rooms uh -huh. and go on long candlelit dinners. I'm pretty sure someone's wife caught her husband on his knees on all fours in a hotel room. And she was like, what are you doing? And he was meditating. like, meditating. meditating. <laughs> I meditate on my knees on a bed. That's how we do it. Yes. He was on yes. a fucking bed. Yep. <laughs> and didn't he have like his sidekick with him? I, yes. I bet there was some exchange from time to time. Yes, his assistant was with him. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of gay going on in this movie. A I'm lot of gay. They, like this entire <laughs> movie feels like two gay couples trying to fool like some respective spouses that they're just trying to make a movie, right? And they have to have yep. a movie at the end of it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So now, okay. So he shows up at the house, which means that we did not have to watch him check into the hotel at all. We didn't know. No mo most that. of the scenes in this movie, we didn't have to happen, but they <laughs> no, did. Right. right. Yep. And so she opens the door. And she's like, oh, you must be Socrates. And he goes, mm -hmm, the great. <clears throat> yeah, I, think meant, I think you meant. What a fucker. But he's very impolite. He kicks her out. He's like, take your barking animal and get out of the house. He's a, he has a communist accent. I'm sorry. I should have mm. mentioned that <laughs> mm -hmm. right up front. Yeah. I think Socrates' power might be having worse vibes than an undead spirit, right? Just the, right? <laughs> the ghost turns to her and is like, hey, please don't leave me alone with him. Did you see how he meditated last night? Just I'll, I'll leave. I'll, I'll, we'll be chill. Well, I'll also, do only Halloween. Oh, he God. says to her, cancel lunch. Yes. <laughs> oh, because there's so much ghostiness going on. Right, right. He won't have time. <laughs> but, and then the, she's like, well, now I have to go back to that same hotel because it's the only hotel that exists on the planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the only one. The only one. Only I hotel. love that she's been there one time and the lady, the receptionist remembers her. It's like, oh, we have got, we've got your regular room re ready. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> 333, three, it's all ready for you. Uh-huh. Well, she knows because Corey has checked into 333 three as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Oh, no, that's mm -hmm. probably... Bow, wow. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, we also have this like useless-ass scene where the gossips decide they're going to go by her house and uh, see the psychic in action. Mm -hmm. And they were dressed up like burglars. Did you notice that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they were in all black. Oh, like the ham burglar? Yes, like the right. ham burglar. So great. But before we get to them, we got we have the secretary comes in and she's like, hey, I put together a report on your house because I know. we'd already made zero through nine. And it turns out you can assemble all the other 
numbers with them. <laughs> there wasn't really any need for us, our company to exist. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I have a handwritten report of how haunted your house is going back to the fucking 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she made a little book report for she her. She did. Uh -huh, she uh -huh. did. <laughs> I mean, maybe she wants to get a piece of that ass, too. So she's trying well, to... Oh, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if Corey's ever put together a research binder for you or anything. I was just, I just was wondering. Oh, my God. Did I ever tell you about how I actually have a very unnaturally long tongue? Yeah, they were worried about it when oh I was a kid. God. But. Lindsay's like, I can only date girls with C names that sound exactly the same. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, until I meet a chick named Curry, it's just the two of you. <laughs> so, and then and, she, and she's like, she's reading through the report. She goes, oh, 1700s, original owners of the land. And I'm like, slow down, Whitey. <laughs> I don't know right? about that. <laughs> she goes, there's a long history of death in that property. I'm like, there's a long history of death everywhere. Everyone right? like, whoever has died. Who my house there. in the 1700s, whoever was living <laughs> here is fucking dead. I'm sorry. That's but, so a good true. point. Good point. She keeps going through. She's like, she'll flip a page, read the pertinent death to us aloud, and then turn another page. <laughs> mm -hmm. So stupid. She even says at this point, she's like, why didn't I listen to the real estate agent who told me that history? I'm like, no, she didn't. We watched the whole interaction and between you, you guys meeting and you owning the fucking house. Why are you gaslighting your audience about this? Yeah, that's right. There was no time. When you, when you walked into a house, you say, this is perfect. Okay, sign here. I'm going to run to the bank. There's no time for the history from the 1700s. Nope. We're not going to talk about it. No, exactly. Yeah. So then we get, uh, she checks back into the hotel. We get the Scooby gang sneaking up on her house. <laughs> oh my God. Dressed yes. as the Hamburglar. That's the Hamburglar. Mm -hmm. This is a great moment. They were so proud of this moment, right? Because they go to the window and they can see Socrates the Great sitting at a table talking to no one and then they take a picture but in the picture you can see ghost girl sitting across from yes yes <laughs> it's based on a true story yeah <laughs> yes sure is <laughs> mm -hmm. and they have this weird like we can't tell anyone about this moment where we're like you guys are gossips that's your entire personality why would you not <laughs> tell people about this it's you so will stupid. you can and you will tell of course they will <laughs> yeah and you know, speaking of telling all of the, the times where, again, it was written in blood on the wall, get out of my house, the cops were never called back. Nope. I kept struggling with that. The the girl, the what's her name, Lindsay, would rather go back into the house to get like her makeup for work, knowing that someone had written in blood and shit. She just goes like, I'm going to get my makeup. I'm not going to call the cops if someone's vandalizing my place. Like, what, what are we doing here? Yeah, right. Yeah, it never occurs to anyone in the movie that it could be a human being doing these things. So, right? yeah, we're safe. Yeah. We're well safe. Right. Right. They hired yeah, two yeah. different psychics before they're like, what about a real person? Maybe we should check for prints. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> what about something that could be verified to exist? Yeah. <laughs> could have been a legit break-in, for uh -huh. real. Uh -huh. Right. And so, okay, so now it's the next day. The secretary comes in and says, Miss Parker, Socrates just faxed over his <laughs> psychic report. I love that. Weird. Faxed. It's a weird delivery mix. Where's he faxing from? So I guess he's as, he's as antiquated as the other Socrates, I guess, right? <laughs> right. And he's doing the Jersey thing. He's like, oh, man, this is a bad spirit. I'm not going to lie to you. This is going to cost you. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is real. No, it's all the way down to the foundation. This ghost is oh, all the way down God. to the foundation. <laughs> if, it, if it was only at the surface level, I could probably do this for like two, three hundred bucks. But yeah, no, this is real bad. <laughs> he ends his facts by saying it has a spirit of death and it's going to kill you. And her immediate response is, you mean I can't go back to my house? <laughs> Right? right? She's like all <laughs> heartbroken that she can't go home to this. somehow this house that, that is now just means so much to her. How many days it has, has it been that she's lived there? Well, it's right. like there's memories. Yeah, she's lived it's there for everyone eight. else's furniture. Yeah. I unpacked my one suitcase and now I can't <laughs> right. live there. And there's that fucking horrible <laughs> rocking chair, but I yeah. can't live there That's anymore. Right. Yeah. And I and I don't feel like the value of the house has changed much in the last eight days. I feel like you can still get your money out of it. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> So, yeah, so and then then we get the ghost, the, the psychic's like, yeah, you got a ghost, nothing else I can do. Then the ghost hunters show up mm -hmm. and we get we get her, her like greeting them. There's a great moment where he's like, if there are any ghosts here, I guarantee our equipment will find them. And I'm like, I am also willing to make that guarantee regardless of the equipment. <laughs> right. I'll do I that. Mean, I'll say the same thing with a pencil. 
<laughs> it's like Larry, Curly, and Mo. I mean, Big Joe show up yes. on the scene, and of course, of course, the neighbor spots them, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> There's more leaves to rake, so she. That's sees right. It. Well, and and she's like, well, how long will this take? And this, and he's like, three to four days. And I'm like, oh my god, they they take so much fucking money from, from people. Three to four <laughs> days. We're at, at a twelve hundred dollar a day rate. Yes. Yeah. If podcasting doesn't work out, we just got to start undercutting psychics and ghost hunters. Ah. Like, yeah, no, I'll come and do some nothing for three hundred bucks. Three hundred mm-hmm. bucks and all the pizza I can eat yeah. done in twenty four hours. Just bring right. in some fancy looking doc matrix printer yeah. and you're and good. Old, like, VCR. Ready to go, yeah. 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 On a stick. Yeah. Well, and also they kick her out too, right? They're like, and also yeah. you can't be in the house for the next three to four days while we're, and it takes longer than that, by the way. They, they end up ro- going over ultimately. Yeah, I think they were there for five. Yeah. And this is the first time I wrote in my note, this movie primes its audience for charlatans so much that I feel like a psychic and ghost hunter produced it. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> yep. So we watch the we watch the ghost hunters ghost hunt for a while, which is nothing. No. Again, this is what like one fraud thinks another f- different fraud does, right? Yeah. But th- but then I got wondering like what do because there there no, there are no ghost hunter shut eyes, right? You don't buy an old metal detector if you think you're doing a real thing, right? <laughs> right. So once they get in the house, do they like? Is it Sushi Go? Is it board games? Right, like, what yeah, do they exactly, actually exactly. do? That's, that was the question that came up. thinking of a thing. Up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. And they, so they go into the, they're like, oh, you know, R- R2-D2 goes off or whatever, right? They get some mm-hmm. peeps. And they're like, oh, we got to go to the master bedroom. That's where we're getting all the readings. One guy says, the temperature just dropped by 50 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? How does that even happen? That, right. That's, no. You, right. And then, and then the other guy, he's got this, like, I don't know, ghost detector N- nonsense device or whatever. Sure. And they can't think of any way to say that, oh, that's off the charts, whatever that reading is. So they have it just catch on fire. Yeah, that it just amazing. blows up. It just it's explodes. so ghostful. The room is so ghostful, his ghost detector catches on. He over- overwhelms it, right. Which is, by the way, now it's very important that I recommend the only Ghost Hunter show you should ever watch. It's 2011's Canadian television show Paranormal Home Inspectors, mm-hmm. where they teamed up a home inspector with a psychic and people are like my house gets cold and he's like you put stuff in front of the vents and they did seven episodes and it's the greatest thing that has oh, nice. ever <laughs> fucking oh happened hell yeah awesome <laughs> all right so back at work carrie the secretary has more ghost paperwork for Lindsay. this time they the report from the ghost hunters right mm-hmm. yeah but these guys are advanced they emailed theirs over they're right. yeah, they, they're, did. they did they're cutting yeah. edge <laughs> very much of this century well socrates is like 80 come on give the right. guy a break. Yeah, no that's right. fair that's fair right the fact that he was using facts instead of carrier pigeon actually is an advanced <laughs> yeah, now i'm picturing true. socrates with a large print phone like my mom just being like tell me how to send an email with this uh-huh. ghost report <laughs> And and the ghost hunter report is like, yes, there's a, a ghost living in your house, mostly in your bedroom. We were there for five days. Here's your bill. And I'm like, that's not ghost hunting, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you go out deer hunting, you don't come back and go, yep, there were deer, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it depends on what kind of hunter you are. Some might, you know. Well, yeah, so I think good or bad. But <laughs> depends yeah, on how right, good yeah, your aim exactly. is, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did, did did Lindsay really need to pay these people to have them say, yep, there's a ghost? I mean, she, they she didn't knew. see anything that no one else saw. It's writing, get out of my house in blood. <laughs> thank you. What else was, yeah, thank you. And so, and then she, she turns to Carrie and she goes, cancel all my appointments. I'm buying a gun and going back to the house. <laughs> did she learn nothing from the baseball bat incident? It doesn't uh, work. It's a ball bat. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is this base shit you're talking about? <laughs> so, yeah. What is her plan? I want to know her plan. She's going to go home and shoot the the. The fucking ghost already got shot. That's what started this whole thing. <laughs> Good right? point. You're you not can't, afraid of a gun. You can't scare a dead ghost. Wait, you yes. can't scare a ghost who died by a... <laughs> fuck it, cut all of that shit. No one I'm saying. Leave it in. Noah, you keep every second of it. You keep every second. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> And then just a, a reminder of how useless everything in this fucking movie is. Carrie, the, the secretary, she calls. She goes, Jeff, Lindsay's gone to buy a gun. Who the fuck is Jeff? 
right? I assume that's her husband. Why are we calling Jeff about that? No fucking clue. It's not her husband. Oh, no, it might be her husband. Her husband's dead. Okay, yeah, Carrie's, okay. Carrie's husband. Yeah, yeah right, obviously. Right. Spaghetti guy. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, right. So then, okay, so she pulls up at the house. Lindsay does, ready to John Wick that fucking ghost lady. <laughs> yes. Right? That would have been hot, by the way. So hot. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she brings... She brings her dog. Yeah. Right? Like, why wouldn't you be like, hey, Corey, I'm going to fight a ghost with a gun. Can you watch Isaac for the afternoon? Okay, right? but if Isaac had had a tiny dog gun, <laughs> that that's my good. favorite television like a, show right like, there. Yeah, yeah. He could have had like a, a proton pack, like the Ghostbusters or something, or carry the trap. Yeah. By the way, so ghost can we, bust a cappers? Can oh, we God. just talk for a second about how messy the ghost hunting team were, and they left Starbursts yes. all over the dining Starburst room table. Starburst and Doritos. <laughs> the scene gets distracted from itself. She goes in to <laughs> shoot the ghost to death, and she's like, oh man, there's chips everywhere. And then right? that is how the scene resolves. The scene <laughs> resolves with her being like, hey, you guys left chips all over my fucking house. Yeah. Can you imagine, like, imagine you know there's, a serial killer, axe murder, rapist, everything in your house. And you're going to go in there and fuck him up with a gun that you just bought and probably don't know how to use. And you walk in, you're not scared. You're just like, fucking A, the kitchen was not like this when I left. Oh, I just thinking I'm never going to get all these crumbs out of the carpet. Now, <laughs> yes, it's so, and, and okay, so I, I'll admit, I forgot about the ghost hunters at this point. And I was thinking that it was supposed to be that the ghost just had a, Fucking me too. Party rager. <laughs> yeah, me well, too. not really a rager because it's Doritos and Starburst, right? Like you've never <laughs> been to a really good party and thought and said, "Wow, look at all the Starburst." Yeah, uh, so <laughs> random. Was that product placement? Did they have some sort of arrangement with, uh, you know, Frito Lay and and the oh, yeah, did I'm, did I'm sure Frito Lay was intimately involved in this film. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so funny because they don't have the rights to any musician or TV right. show, but they'll show Starburst. Yeah, and but then. Just when you're thinking there's no way this movie can still justify its inclusion in GAM, Carrie prays to Jesus that Lindsay won't shoot the ghost and will get a good night's sleep tonight. That Fuck yeah. got yep. our attention. That's what so you hard. call a, a turning point. That's turning a turning point. point. That's a classic movie turning point. So let's hell on, yeah. It, call on the power of Jesus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and let's think about this for a hot minute. So she's, she's, <laughs> She is asking Jesus to make it so that Lindsay doesn't shoot the ghost and that Lindsay can sleep well. If you think that you have that kind of faith in quotations, because I hate that word, why don't you ask Jesus to make the ghost leave? There is you that, go. It's is weird that, that she though? warms up with a kind of lame prayer. <laughs> also, I, don't, I can't believe she gives a shit. How many Christians in this country own firearms? Right? Yeah, why is she afraid? Why does she care? That's true. <laughs> yeah, at least she got one from this century. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's the fucked up thing. So we see her, we go back to her house. She lays down in her bed in full, fully dressed, wearing her, all her jewelry and everything. She, lay, she lays down in bed. And then we cut to the next morning. She's at the office and she's yawning, which means that Jesus didn't come through. Oh, fucking Jesus, you're she right. She didn't get a good night's sleep. Um... We cut straight from Jesus, please let her get a good night's sleep to her going, I sure didn't get a good night's sleep last night. <laughs> well, Jesus probably heard that prayer and he was like, I'm sorry, that's super late. I'm not using my powers on good night's sleep. No, no. no. I, got, I got more shit. People just lost their car keys. I got to help them find yeah, them. Right, right. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Larry needs parking right now. God damn it. So yeah, so and we also get this moment where like Carrie tells her, she's like, hey, you know, I called Pinpoint Ghost Hunters about all of the... Um, Starburst and Doritos, they said that they put all their trash away. So it must have actually been that the ghost took all of the thrown away Starbursts and Doritos <laughs> out of the trash and littered them around the room. Mm -hmm. If my wife is listening, uh, that's also what happened in my <laughs> office and study. The ghost also uh, <laughs> threw all my bad. shit around. But then there's this great bullshit. We're going to get the bullshit turn, right? This movie is about to get so much more full of shit. Carrie sits down and she goes, this, I love this line so much. She goes, look, I know there are rules about talking about religion at the workplace and I could lose my job for saying this, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, give me some, oh, persecute me, baby. Persecute mm -hmm. me. Fuck yeah. But then, but she says, but there's this program that I like on TV. Remember, brought it back. It all makes sense now. Yep. There's this program that I like on TV about a ministry in Florida who spiritually cleanses houses. 
fuck yeah, they do. <laughs> in real life. Here are their real names. They are doctors, doctors. They are Paul and Claire Hollis. And yes, Claire Hollis wrote, produced, and casted this film. <laughs> you mean she wrote, produced, and casted this commercial for her company? Yes, this advertisement for <laughs> right. her ministries. Yes. Who are you going to call? Spiritual house cleaners. <laughs> Claire Hollis. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, wow. I'm not going to name, you know what? I'm not even going to name their ministry. Fuck their ministry. I'm not even going to say, hard. I, okay, it's Living Free Ministries. I'm only telling you that because <laughs> you you have to look this up. Listeners, this is fucking funny shit. So it sounds scary, but. It's pure entertainment value. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So we cut back to the house. Carrie is now showing up at Lindsay's house with the heroes of the film. There are 13 minutes left in this movie, right? But they're going to show up with the heroes. This is when ra the Rascal Flats guy um, pops in? Yes. And, okay. Gotcha. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. So they show up and they're like, so your house is haunted, huh? Tell me about that, the hauntedness. And she's like, yeah. So um, cold air will rush past me. I'll hear noises for no reason. My dog will bark at nothing. There will be blood streaming down the walls, <laughs> writing evil messages. I'm like, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> oh, God. She could have just said blood on the walls and that would have been great. Like that would have been making it more urgent. You didn't need to go through all the, the shit that is not the blood on the walls. Well, except that in this advertisement, they want the viewer to go, wow, you know, my house has three of those four things. Oh, my <laughs> dog barks. My <laughs> blind and deaf dog barks at nothing. Right, Maybe yes, I need to call this right. guy. My 16-year-old gotcha. dog. Yeah, right. I wish they'd turn to the camera all earnest and say, "If has this happened to you? <laughs> yeah, right, yes. <laughs> there must be a better way. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, but my notes get really dark at this point. Like, I, I'm like, my notes here are like, wow, these people need to fuck off the edge of a building right here because like 90% <laughs> of their business model is taking advantage of mentally ill people and the other 10% is taking advantage of lonely people. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And this is fucking disgusting. Yeah. But we watched their con. We watched it all the way through. We watched the, the Rascal Flats guy walk around, you know, yelling at the ghost to get the fuck out of there in the name of Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. I call this guy, by the way, Roast Beefer Sutherland in my notes. <laughs> in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> roast Beefer Sutherland. I like it. That's awesome. I like it. Hey, Heath, you can take another week off. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love when the spiritual house cleaners are like, you must be so frightened. And to me, I was like, well... Not as frightening as you're acting. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like when you, uh, the guy that owns a company insists on being in the local commercial. It's just like that. Yeah, right, yes. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so, but he's given us his like, sure, ghost hunters and psychics are great, but to really like round it out, you need us to pitch, right? Like, because he doesn't want to like shit on the other con artists too bad. Right. But he has to point out that the only way we can get rid of these evil spirits is with, you know, oh, our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus That's Christ. Right. You gotta join How many times Jesus. did he say a Lord and yeah. Savior, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ? It was so many Oh times. my God, so many. Horrible. It was like he was sponsored by Jesus and he was like, <laughs> no, 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 we get free subs for the rest of the year if we <laughs> right. mention Jesus' name. Well, it's like they were like, hey, look, guys, if you if you want to get on GAM, you need to mention our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at least six times. And then they mm -hmm. realize that with 10 minutes left to go. They're like, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. We're almost done. So yeah, so he walks around yelling at the evil spirit to go away. And then he's like, but if you want to keep the demons away, you need Jesus. So 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 to be clear, you don't just need to be Christian. You need to give them a bunch of money to walk around your house. There it is. Yelling at Jesus. And then you need to join their religion. That's the kicker. Which also means you'll be continuing to give money via the pass along plate. Right. Yeah, exactly. In that scene, I, I loved how well, love slash hated, how the girls were just all huddled together and scared. You know, they had to go back to the whole... Right, while yeah. the man did all the exactly. ghost shooing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, right, right. Ghost shooing? That's ghost awesome. Shoeing. Yes. <laughs> and he goes... He goes at one point, he's like, all right, so I have uh, already chased the ghost out of all the rooms but one. He's like, but what that means is that the finale of the movie is going to take place now. And they're like, oh, it's nice of you right. to warn us. So, and this is the part where the ghost actually appears. He's like, get, ghost, get out in the name of Jesus. The ghost appears and says, I will kill you. And he goes, no, you won't. And the ghost is like, damn it. I didn't think of you saying that. Fuck. And it disappears. <laughs> oh, you know what? I feel like I just want to watch the last eight minutes of the though? movie over and over Do just ya? for that. Just to see the little bits that you miss the first time. Because you're like, this is so fucking stupid. Oh. Just to see it. But I do remember that, that the power 
scene between the exorcist man and the ghost was like, God damn it. You know, yeah. Because Jesus got rid of her. It was the power of Jesus. Right. No, mm-hmm. exactly. He's like, he's like, no, you don't need me. You just need the power of Jesus. And to be clear, you need me first. But then <laughs> right. after that, you just for the ongoing payments of just. Yeah, right, right. And also, we should point out that this guy, he keeps like pausing randomly as though he memorized his lines in 11 word chunks oh. and can only deliver them that way. Yes, we were talking about that. Mary Knight's like, is he just making this up as he goes? Is he like, what is he doing? And he kept fumbling through shit. He was stuttering. He was starting over. And it, it was almost like the camera guy was going, listen, I have to be somewhere at 6 p.m. So we just need to wrap this shit up. <laughs> and I have to return my camera back to, you know, RCA rentals. Right, so right, we right. just don't have time for this. It really was, it, it was, it was like he had actually said all these words in real life when he was, you know, pulling the wool over people's eyes. And then yes. he's doing it again here for the movie and he just sucked at it. It was he's just so said bad. It so many times where, and honestly, yes. honestly, I'll, it, it, it felt a lot like the guy with the cue cards wasn't moving fast enough. Right. <laughs> he had to right. lick his thumb to get him to come off or something. But, but at any rate, so, but they'd say, but then the, the movie ends as Eli said with a fucking altar call. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like as a surprise sales pitch, he's like, yeah, so uh, ghosts are gone for now, but if you're going to want to stay, I'm gone. And I was like, oh my God, he's going to sell her like a monthly re-up program. But what? <laughs> she has to change her religion, right? right? She has to be Christian now. And give him 10% of her income forever. Yeah. Yep. That's such a, it's like, you know, you call someone, hey, I have termites. They come out and they'll get rid of the termites, but you need to sign up for this plan so I can keep them away. It's the right. same fucking idea. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Well, that was a really quick conversion on her part, though, I thought. Wasn't it? Well, they were wrapping everything up in the last eight <laughs> minutes, you know? They, there was yeah. no, because, you know, there was no speaking about religion until Homegirl was like, well, I can't talk about this because I could get fired, but right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. But so she says all the magic Jesus words, she repeats after them, and then she says the closing line of the movie, she says, or no, I'm sorry. It's not the closing line of the movie yet, but it's the closing line of the scene. She goes, I feel so much love and joy. And then <laughs> we cut to two years later where the party's yeah, having yeah. their great big we're number one celebration. <laughs> yeah, everything works out. Oh my God. They've literally just written the number one on various objects. Yes, it's the, yes, well, the, the hashtag, right? So it's like number one. Yes. Yeah. So we brought the spray paint? We need some ones. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was such a big jump. Like, and uh, I'm sorry. There's just, there. there's literally so much that we could talk about here, but I'm just going to say this. The way like these churches make you think that you will feel better, you'll be happy with it could have been oh, Jesus is gonna fix yeah, all your problems. It could have been yep. a haunting, it could have been cancer, it could have been depression, it could have been anything. But as soon yep. as you let Jesus in, you feel great and then everything and works. Everything out. improves. Yeah. Everything improves. Yep. Yep. So so fucked up. And I, well, right, right, exactly. And I should also point out, like the, again, their stupid ass understanding of how anything works. Their company has now moved in twenty four months to num- from number eight to number one, which is probably like like as Eli was pointing out, like several orders of magnitude up in terms of profit. Of a business, right? Yeah, sure. And yet they're celebrating with a potluck in her backyard. <laughs> That's a good point. It's mm-hmm. like it's another housewarming party. That's all. That <laughs> right? Was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Planned in one day uh-huh. again. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, and once again, we learn that the only good spirit is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, she goes inside <laughs> and she prays and reads her Bible. Oh, that's right. And then <laughs> we get the credits. And on the left side of the screen, through the credits, we see a picture of real life Paul and Claire Hollis mm-hmm. with their phone number beneath it. <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes. If you would like Have to give them, them money to scare... No, I... <laughs> no, uh, I... This might be a nice uh, Patreon level here, here where I will call these people. There yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> We'll just bring him to my messy ass house and be like, you know, the ghost hunter said they put everything in the trash bag. <laughs> Pretty sure I've got a ghost. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, God. <laughs> so great. So, all right. Well, 
Mary Shelley, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Because you came back even knowing what you were getting into. And that's a lot. I, we really appreciate I know. it. I, we have no fear about trashing what the religious hell's wrong movies. With us? It's always <laughs> easy <laughs> to yep. trash them. It's hard to get through the watching of them because that's some bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we know at the other end of watching a horrible movie is some time to sit with Eli and Noah and just trash the fuck out of it. That's right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> exactly. And of course, quick reminder to the listeners that you can hear more from Mary and Shelley on the Latter Day Lesbian Podcast, which you're going to find linked on the show notes. Highly recommended. They're always a ton of fun. And while that does it for our review of Unwanted Presents, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to trip and fall back into the pit. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we're headed back to the theaters because sometimes an Exorcist sequel looks so bad you're going to need popcorn to withstand it. Oh, so we'll man. be watching what I believe is Exorcist 4 Believer. Oh, damn it. All right. So with another theatrical trip to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 425 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Mary and Shelley for suffering alongside us and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing A, The Citation Needed, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinema suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slatt and people drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no Lucius promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Corey and Carrie scissored happily ever after. <laughs> you stole mine. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say... What was, we don't know, the name of the man of the gossip trio? No. He finally came out of the closet. Oh, nice. <laughs> so gay, right? Oh, yeah. And they all got detention? <laughs> Paul and Claire Hollis went on to fuck an elderly couple out of their life savings. That's the truth <laughs> one. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I would probably put the depressing one at the end. <laughs> <laughs>